that's kind of cool. Listening to the first iteration of these songs versus the ones that we're hearing in Justice for All. There's a slight, a slight upgrade to the music. Anyway, hello y'all. Happy Friday. What's up? Don't tell me you couldn't hear this music the entire time. <laughs> what? What did I do? What? What did I do yesterday? I passed out for like ten hours yesterday. That's for sure. Ah, yes, yes. I was playing around with a new bot. I got rid of sh um, stream elements, I think is what it's called. Decided to forgo that one. And I'm trying to mess around with this new thingy in hopes that it streams streamlines like my processes a little bit better. But uh, I'm still trying to figure it out. Still trying to figure it out. Anyway, hush. I forgot that they uploaded pretty much the entirety of the Ace Attorney OST in Spotify, so definitely taking advantage of that. Hello, hello, hello. Again, happy Friday. I am going to go and play more Ace Attorney because we didn't get to play yesterday. I, I was actually really frustrated that I slept in that long. I, I was meaning to wake up earlier, truly, and then my alarms didn't go off. <laughs> like, the the alarm that I set was around, like, what, 7.30 in the evening? And it it didn't go off, so I was kind of frustrated. Kind of frustrated. A light jog. Yeah, I've been trying to be more active, I guess. But a lot of that activity is going to cooking. As of right now, I've been trying to be better about cooking more often. So today, Filled my small goal of five minutes a day of jogging? No! It's okay. Pick it up again. Pick it up again to, to, to tomorrow. Just because you failed one day doesn't mean it's a failure all day. All the time. Like, that's how I feel about stretching. At most, I really try to stretch every day in some way. But... I've been pretty bad about that, too. So... TBH, I actually am running on two hours of sleep right now. <laughs> uh, so, we'll see how well my brain computes on anything, because... Uh, why? I had... I, I was asked to hang out with some past co-workers this morning. They wanted to eat breakfast and show me good Mexican food. So I said, heck yeah, I'll eat good Mexican food. <laughs> and mind you, like I said, I woke up really, really late last night, so I was just up playing a lot of Planet Zoo and then decided to just stay up. And then when I got home, it was after I dropped off, or I sent the package, so that should be going to kimchi soon. And then I went grocery shopping with the idea of I really want to cook some food. So I took a nap, and then around 3 o'clock I woke up and started 3.30ish actually. And that's when I started cooking. And then after that, that's when I was like, cool, I'm done with the food that I made. I made some pickled radish. 
like daikon radish, pickled daikon radish, roasted green beans, and pan-fried garlic prawns. So that, that is on the menu for tonight. But I'm still not hungry because the, the Mexican breakfast still has me full. And I wasn't expecting for us to be there that long. We were there at 7.30 this morning and we ended up staying there till almost like 9.50. <laughs> so, I, I guess we really took our time bonding because it's been forever. It's been like almost two, two years since I last saw these co-workers. So, it was really nice to be able to talk with them and catch up and tell them about why a patient called 911 on me because she's crazy. <laughs> and then I learned that my past co-worker also had somebody call 911 on her except it wasn't even a patient it was another nurse and we we're just like what is happening over there and they're they're just like looking at me and my co-worker that i am currently working with and they're they're just like you do not we miss you but you do not want to be back here <laughs> so yeah, it, it seems even more chaotic since after I left that hospital. But it was a good time. I do not regret it. And I still have some energy, so I might as well try to knock out Ace Attorney now before I pass out later. Um. Holy moly, I caught a rise! Oh my god, Wheeze Mander! Hello, welcome. Don't overdo it. I should be okay. I'm sitting. I'm relaxing. I, I've I've done my walking around. I've I've done my my socializing. I've done. I've literally checked off all the box of being a normie. So now it's time for me to become gamer, right? Where I sit around for hours on end using my big brain. Wheeze, Mander. <laughs> yes. How are you? Happy Friday. You've been grinding Majora's ass, are you sure to figure out easy tricks for me to pick up for the day three day challenge? So, so, so it's pretty much try to beat the game in one cycle. Is that correct? Because I know you've been practicing and figuring out tricks. I just keep forgetting the goal. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. All right, guys. Let's. That was my day. So let's uh. Resume Ace Attorney. Where were we? We are on case four, where Maya is kidnapped, where Francisca got shot, where Edgeworth is back on the stand, and. The person that we're trying to make guilty doesn't really seem that guilty and we feel bad about it, question <laughs> mark? Hi, Dickie. Welcome, welcome. Happy Friday. How are you? So, as far as I'm seeing, all of the 16-year-olds are having terrible things happening to them. Teenage girls are not safe. Young men are confused. And we don't know what to do, actually. We are kind of like in a hard, hard situation because we were supposed to get a guilty verdict or a not guilty verdict, right? Completely acquitted for our client on the first day of the trials and we were not able to do that, so. Yeah, don't know what's going to happen from here. I think it's another investigation day. What we are investigating, though, not sure. So that's what we're going to do right now. Yes, give it to me. March 22nd, 524 p.m. 
right in code law offices. Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! There, there, pearls. I... I can't take it anymore. <sighs> okay, look, it'll be all right. Everything may still work out. Don't, don't freak out. Hmm? The condition was that we had to get a not guilty verdict, right? And so far, the kidnapper has kept his word and hasn't hurt Maya. And he won't, because Mr. On Guard hasn't been given a guilty sentence yet. <laughs> Cheer up, we don't have time to stand around crying. We have to get go- Phoenix, she's like eight. Just, just pat her on the back and be like, but we're gonna save Mystic Maya. Okay, gonna grind at Majora's ass again. Good luck. Thank you, thank you. You're right. Mystic Maya's in much more pain than I am. Yes, that's right. So, hey, you guys. Glad I caught you, pal. Mr. Scruffy Detective. No oh boy. Looks like Detective Gumshoe has been dubbed Mr. Scruffy Detective in Pearl's book now. It's just plain old Mr. Dick Gumshoe now, and I came to talk to you, pal. But we're kind of busy right now. All right, what's going on, Gumshoe? So... What are you gonna do from now on? You kinda got fired, I forgot about that. He has my name, Dick. Is your last name Gumshoe? Question mark. Eyebrow raise. What do you mean, pal? Well, you've been fired, right? So do you have a new job lined up yet? Oh, that. Uh, what am I supposed to do now, pal? I, I, I don't have anything coming yet at all until my next payday. Ooh, what are you talking about? You don't have another payday! I guess that means I'm just gonna have to work here at your place, pal! Say what?! You'll be searching for things that'll prove Mr. On Guard's innocence all day, right? Well, yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna help you, pal. I've got lots of experience in investigating and watching over people's places. And I'm great at making really simple meals, pal. I'll take care of all of it. You know, I imagine that Gumshoe probably does, like, sad college kid meals just to get by. The 4 a.m. ramen runs, because that's all that's available. <laughs> and, like, leftover cold pizza that he's been rationing out for the entire week. <laughs> I feel so bad, but that's probably Gumshoe. Come on, Mr. Nick. Let's let Mr. Scruffy Detective take care of things. Considering his meager pay, right? And so sad. Uh, okay. By the way, what's your best dish? Instant noodles, pal. Oh, called it. Why am I surrounded by people who only eat cheap, unhealthy foods? Because... America. America. <laughs> Edgeworth. That was the first time I've ever seen Mr. Edgeworth act like that. Never thought he'd say something like, he didn't care if Miss Andrews killed herself. Oh, that's right! I forgot about how hard Edgeworth was last week! Why is everybody around me so poor? <laughs> it's okay. Phoenix is also not that rich either. He's also poor. Who is he to talk? He said that? That's horrible. But because of him doing that, we got the truth, finally. Yeah, he was literally like, I- What was the quote? I even quoted it. He, he's like, Before you die, I will rip the truth out of your still-breathing lips. And I was like, Dang, Edgeworth. Since when were you like this? Haha. <laughs> Why are you so harsh? He's literally straight up like, I don't even care if you want to die. What's more important right now is you telling the truth. Then you can die. I don't care what you do with yourself after. Just like, oh, good heavens, Edward. That is... You would probably be canceled in, re in modern era. The truth. 
Miss Andrews' last testimony, I wonder if that was the truth. I'll give you that there was nothing strange in her testimony itself. But, I still think there is something fundamentally wrong with this whole thing. You mean about that thing, pal? Why would she want to... No, I mean almost need to frame Mr. On Guard. I could have figured that out from anything she said that day. Then... And then you're saying that testimony was a lie? Not a lie, per se. It, it just feels like there's more here than meets the eye. Or, that's what Edward would like us to believe. Not such a dirty trick. Even that woman prosecutor was better than that. Francisca Von Karma, who got shot. Speaking of Miss Von Karma, do you have any more information on her condition? Wasn't she shot this morning? Yeah, what's going on there? Miss Von Karma was shot today on the way- uh, Shot today on the way to the trial by a pistol pal. But she's gonna be fine, right? I mean, Edward said she was in stable condition, but... Well, she was shot in the shoulder, so she's okay and still hanging in there. They should be done taking out the bullet. So she's probably resting at the hospital. Which one? What? Are you gonna visit her, pal? No. Well, I, I was kind of thinking about it. Hey, you've actually got a heart, don't you? She looked like she was being tortured to death not being able to go to the trial today. So maybe it'd be good for her if you went her if you went and let her whip you a bit for a bit, pal. Oh, but she almost killed me last time. Let's go let her whip us, Mr. Nick. Oh. Pearl. Pause. Don't say that. Don't say that. I, I could easily just screenshot this out of context. <laughs> Now I'm definitely not going. There you go. There you go, Nick. Um, let's see. The name of the hospital. Oh yeah, the Hottie Clinic. Ew. Uh, this place? That name sends a chill down my spine. Well, I guess I can't hurt to stop by and say hi. So, uh... Oh god. Will you even say anything about this stuff? Oh, why don't I make instant noodles instead? I can't believe you got fired, Gumshoe! People are jealous of my roguishly cool detective look, pal. It's because of this look that I passed the detective's test, you know? Oh. But you know, people can't coast through life on their looks alone, pal. Yeah. You can't count on your looks alone. Wow, I learned something new today. Why are we taking care of an eight-year-old girl that gets excited at the idea of being whipped? <laughs> oh, I, at first I thought I had something to say to that. I don't. I genuinely don't have anything in response to that. I don't know. Pearl's a special child. Cheer up. You can't give in, Missy. Yeah. Hey, I know. I'll show you something cool. How's this? It's a real, genuine pistol. I... I don't have my pistol or my palace... Or my palace? My police badge anymore. Cheer up! You can't give in! Yeah! What are those two doing? They are... cheering for each other. <laughs> this guy's just expanding as he talks really gets me. <laughs> Like the Terry Crews peck flexing thing. Ugh. I do not like that. I don't know. I don't know if there's anybody who finds that attractive, but it is not me. It'll be okay. You'll see her again, little missy. Yeah. It's really important that you don't give up. Okay. I guess a big voice really does give you a sense of presence. I. I won't give up. Ever. That's right, girly. Is she alright after being shot? I mean. Her wound isn't that bad. Well, the gunshot wound, anyway. But the wound to her pride? Now that's a different story, pal. The wound to her pride? Well, until now, she's always upheld the Von Karma Creed. But since she came here, you, well, you've given her pride... You've given her pride quite a beating, pal. Oh. 
I mean, she may act all grown up, but she's really still just an 18 year old. I'm sorry. I recant what I said. Not 16 year olds. 18 year old girlies are not safe. Quite frankly, I worry about her, pal. This is the first time I've seen that side of Mr. Edward, pal. Forcing people to say what he wants them to during testimony? I want to know what in the world happened to him all this time be, since he's been gone. Um, is there anything you'll say about these people? They actually have that much control over their own body. Right, like the muscles. The moosles. My impression of her has totally changed, pal. Um, so where is she right now? I'm sure she's being questioned down at the precinct. At the very least about messing with the body and obstruct obstructing the investigation. And she'll probably be staying over at the detention center. The detention center, huh? She was Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. Because of the suicide of the mentor she depended on, Adrian Andrews tried to follow her in an attempted suicide. Now the question is, who is Miss Andrews relying on now? Oh, I feel so bad that Gumshoe is just like a sad, sad big man. Her big 18 changes nothing. No, it does not. Alright, let's go back to this terrible place. Never thought I'd ever come back to this place. Oh. Oh my god. Let me get up real close, uncomfortably close to the mic. Mm, yes, are you here to visit a patient? Uh, hi. W wait a second, you're... Hmm. Yes, I'm the director, Hoti. Oh, Hoti Clinic, right? <laughs> Why are you still here? Hi, Zero. Welcome. Why is he twitchy? How? I don't know, man. <laughs> Stop! I'm barfing. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is this is how you should be. You shouldn't be barfing. <clears throat> yes. Uh, w what is it? Can I help you? You can tell me. <clears throat> yes. Director Haughty. Oh. E Edgeworth. <clears throat> yes. I I'm, I'm Director Haughty. <laughs> Oh, you're the man for this morning. Hmm. Yes, what, what, what is it? Uh, uh huh. Director Francisca. How is Francisca von Karma? Hmm. You don't need to worry. Hmm. Yes, she's in good hands. Because, you see, I'm taking personal care of her. Good, good care of her. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> hmm. Yes, and, that, and then that thing, that surgery, it went well. You have my gra- Somebody pull Edward aside, please. Please! It looks like Edward doesn't know about this director in his secret. She looks so pitiful. Absolutely terrified. Mmm, yes. But I understand. Mmm, mm, mm, yes, yes. Her opponent was a gun, after all, uh huh? And when I snuck up on her, real secret-like, she would scream really loud. Mmm, yes. I see Edward. <laughs> ah, but she's really cute too. When I do that, she'd whip me with her whip, uh huh? Mm -hmm. Boy, did I cry like a baby. Mm -hmm, yes, but I think I could get used to it. Mm -hmm. Go back to your room. You were so mean. <laughs> so, so mean. My, my frisky friska. But that's good to- Oh! Okay, okay. I- Yes, it's time for my IV drops. Mm -hmm, yes. And what are those tulips doing in your hands, Mr. Phoenix, right? Ugh, oh, I knew I should have come here. Are you okay? 
I was shot in front of the courthouse in my right shoulder. <laughs> but it's no big deal. This sort of thing happens all the time. I even had full intentions of running this trial this morning. But... but that would have been too much for you. There's no need to act tough in front of us, you know? Regardless, I was dragged here by that man over there. He was so unyielding, one has to wonder if he has... if he was simply interested in stealing my case. It was the only logical course of action given the bullet was still lodged in your shoulder. But by taking over the case, I found myself having to clean up after you and your and that irresponsible deal you made. I think I know what the deal he's referring to. <laughs> I didn't read that right. Miss Von Karma. You made a deal with Miss Andrews yesterday, didn't you? I don't know what you mean. In order to make sure you got your guilty verdict on Mr. On Guard, you told Miss Andrews to not testify in court today. I don't know what you're talking about. Do you have any proof that I made such a deal? You're denying it? It looks like you were lucky, Mr. Phoenix Wright. If I had been in court today, this trial would already be over. All while hiding Miss Andrews' own crime? That is it my problem. Whether she had tempered with the evidence or not, I have only one objective, to find Miss... Oh, bleh, bleh. To find on God guilty of murder. The end justifies the means, Mr. Phoenix, right? The end justifies the means. This one, Karma. Adrian Andrews believed you when you said, If you don't tell the truth of what really happened, then on guard will be found guilty. Thank you, guys. Thank you. What does that have to do with me? Because of that, she is now in danger of being found guilty herself. Well, because she believed in your words until the very end. That still has nothing to do with me. She's just a weak person, that's all. But you had to know she was... Ah! I think visiting hours are about over. So if you'll excuse me. What's wrong? Why did she suddenly cut you off? Probably because she thinks I had the advantage in that argument. Edgeworth. Hey, buddy. What happened today at the trial, Edgeworth? That was not like you at all. I mean, I know you knew about Miss Andrews' condition. You could have made her testify as many times as you wanted, but to go that far? Yeah, even I was shocked, but I mean, low key, that was good. <laughs> But she wouldn't testify about that until I said something. Listen, right? The courtroom is a garden of judgment. I'm putting myself on the line when I stand in there. And that's why I made the witness do the same. It's only natural. Adrian's card? By the way, Edgeworth, you were really angry in court today. That's rare for you. Yo, you could even see his pupils, like, shaking. Witness, that card! Give it to me! Hurry! Do you have any idea what you have stupidly yet inadvertently done? This... I can't believe you hid this from me all this time. That card. What in the world is it? You mean this? Listen, right? This is top secret information. You absolutely cannot leak this. In the middle of a, of a waiting room in a hospital? Special investigation team has existed for a number of years, but few know of it. I, I understand. The task is to find the owner of this card. A man called Shelly the Killer. And just as his name states, he is a killer. An assassin. The best at that. An assassin. So, who is this Shelly the Killer guy? The killer is the name of a long-standing line of assassins. Long-standing? The name first appeared about 100 years ago, I hear. Shelley is the professional name of the third heir to the killer name. So because his profession... Oh. So because his professional name is Shelley, he leaves cards with a show on them? He has a habit of making sure to leave a card by the body of his victims. 
why would he do something like that? I think it is part of his duty to his clients. His duty? If he leaves a card, then his clients can be assured it was he who killed the victim. It also serves as insurance against any charges being pushed onto his clients. I see. The killer values the trust between his clients and himself above all else. It seems that this is one of... That this is... Oh, hold on. It seems that this is one honorable assassin with a moral conscience. I guess that even honorable assassins can exist. So you think this assassin... You think he's the one who did the killing in this case? It would appear that way. The discovery of the card basically confirms it, wouldn't you agree? But, okay, she found that card in her stuff, right? Shelly the killer, huh? Maya's situation. Ooh, did we tell Edward about this? I noticed something at the trial today. You were behaving in a very strange manner. Is something the matter? You gotta tell him. I guess I should just tell him. Maya, she's been kidnapped. Kidnapped? What does the kidnapper want? An acquittal. I like how they're like sharing all of this hot information in the middle of a hospital clinic lobby. Literally everybody's up in your business in there, okay? Even if they're not paying attention to you because they're like bleeding out of their arm or whatever, they can hear that junk. Y'all need to move. <laughs> It's the safest place to talk. Goodness. Oh no. Something something hippo violation. <laughs> hippo violation. <laughs> I'll prepare a rescue team as soon as possible and resolve this by tomorrow. Really? Did you hear that, Mr. Nick? Mr. Edgeworth is going to. Stop trying to console me, Edgeworth. I don't need your pity. Ooh, ooh, Phoenix. Phoenix. Being all defensive and be like, I don't need you to help me with my problems. I'm gonna be super secretive about everything about my life. I was actually surprised that he actually shared it because he usually doesn't share his problems a lot. But then here he is having this whole entire uproar. uproar. Mr. Nick? There's no way you could find her. We don't even have a single lead to go on. There's only one way to save her. I, I have to get an acquittal somehow. That's the only way. Right. Listen, you need to know something. Juan Curida was killed by Shelly the Killer. And the client who ordered the job is Matt on guard, your own client. Please stop! I can't listen to you! I, I can't believe that. I see. Well, if you want to continue your investigation, I need to sneeze. That was a lie. It, I, now I won't sneeze. It's too shy to come out. You will need this. A tissue. The hotel right now is restricted to police personnel only. As we are looking for any clues that might lead us to Shelly the Killer. But if you take this with you to the hotel, I'm sure they will let you enter. Bless you on hold. <laughs> In any case, I must attend to the preparations for Maya's rescue team. We'll meet again, if anything should happen. Now if you'll excuse me. Mr. Nick? Do you... Do you think Mr. On Guard hired an assassin? No way! I mean, he doesn't have a Cyclock. Yeah, I guess not. Maya. Please, all I ask is you make it home. Safe and sound. That's brutal for Phoenix, though, because, like, he was super close friends with Maya's sister, Mia. And then seeing Mia, this isn't spoilers. This is the first game, by the way, literally like five minutes in. So this isn't spoilers. But Mia, the Maya's sister, Mia, was his mentor. And then ha imagine coming back to the office to find her dead. He probably does not want to have a repeat of that ever again. So I, I can only imagine the panic and concern that Phoenix has right now.
It's definitely a trauma for him, yeah. Yeah, don't all doctors and nurses have to worship a divine hippo? <laughs> that punishes them if they share patient secrets. You know who would be punished next? Windows. Did you Ooh, pause. Like, y'all, Windows 11, okay? I talked about this with some friends. But isn't, like, Microsoft trying to, like, push this AI thing called Recall, where it literally screenshots everything on a computer? And right when this art, why not these articles started coming out about it, I would say like two weeks prior, no, okay, maybe a month prior, a month prior, all of the computers in the hospital that I worked at updated to Windows 11. And that was kind of brutal because it was at the dead of night and I still had some charting to do, but it wanted to update. And so they all updated to Windows 11. I was like, okay, whatever. But then this comes out and I'm like, wouldn't the this all encompassing hippo be upset about this? Who agreed to that? I don't know. But that, now I'm like curious if the IT team is shaking in their boots and then had like a little breath of relief when Windows was like, you know what? Maybe we should pause and delay this. But... For me, I'm thinking, yo, IT team, like, Hippo ain't gonna be happy. The Divine Hippo is notoriously not fond of IT times. <laughs> yeah, I, I am, um, hmm, you know, like, uh, I feel like they're gonna make the Divine Hippo upset with, with that new push for screenshotting literally everything without, without censoring important details that was like one of the key points that it screenshots everything without lit without censoring very confidential information so i'm sitting here going okay so what about like all of these hospitals that are actually installing windows 11 huh are are they all just gonna become linux and then i'm just gonna cry because if there's anything worse than, I don't know, as, as like, primitive as Meditech to work with, <laughs> then, um, I, I, I'm just, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm curious. The, the, the benefit here is that at least on my side of the hospital, I'm still doing paper charting. So, literally everything that I'm doing is still on paper. And then at most on the computer is like vital signs. But it still has, of course, a name, date, birth date, numbers, social security, etc., etc. So, yeah, that's pretty, pretty not good. Like, not, not, not a good look at all for anything. I've kind of given up on the whole idea of privacy. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks sucks real bad so anyway sorry for my little segue i'm just just the thought after being reminded of the divine hippo which psa it's hippa <laughs> h-i-p-p-a and don't ask me what it stands for i already forgot my defense against having my info stolen is that i'm poor and not important <laughs> You will not gain anything from me. Maybe just my eyeballs and my attention for like a minute. But aside from that, you gain nothing. Still try to fight for my privacy. My privacy. Yeah, that's good. That's what we try to do. All right. Maya. <laughs> I guess even kidnappers can be a little clumsy. Clumsy enough to drop a card like this for me. And even though he said he was an assassin, I bet he's just making that up. Like how Nick does everything in court. Oh, Maya, why would you say that? <laughs> he doesn't. Okay, maybe he does. Maybe he makes up a, like a little bit, but then he still proves it somehow, you know? Anyway, let's try out the card trick with this card I just found. Sounds like I got the door open. Okay, time to go take a look around. Yo, gutsy, Maya? There's all sorts of things piled up here, but it's too dark to see. 
What? It's dark. There's a big old fluorescent light. Okay. What's this? It feels like the uh, it feels like there are a lot of glass bottles here. And these, they feel like barrels. That ooh. Barrel. I'll pass. Too bad I'm really hungry. Um, and not really thirsty. Maya spent too much time on the computer or too close to the TV. I've unlocked the door with this card. I should probably go and take a look around. What if, what if bro is just standing, like, hovering in front of the door? That'd be scary. Saddle dish? What is this place? I've got a feeling I'm not in the hotel anymore. Are those videos over there? Well, I'll worry about that later. For now, I should be looking for clues. That way I can show them to sis and maybe get out of here. Yeah, girly. Look at this TB. Perhaps she wears dark sunglasses indoors. AKA she's cool and mysterious. Ooh, I can do that. Hold up. Hold up. I can do that. Oh yeah. Cool glasses indoors. I got you. Wow, did everybody know that she just got a lot cooler and mysterious? <laughs> oh, sheesh. That's right! I did become way cooler and mysterious! Yes! I love that. That's good. I forgot that I had the space. I need to fix the teeth, though. But... Yes. I am. Thank you. My nose is so big right now. Okay. Big TV. Wow. I've never seen a TV this big before. If you had a TV this big when it was like 2008, you were like the coolest kid. I don't even know if they made TVs this big in 2008. They probably did. But like for sale to the common people and you had a TV this big, yo, you were baller. Now where's the power button, hmm? Fooly, it's busted. This TV, historically speaking, weighed roughly 12 tons. <laughs> I would so die a happy samurai fan. If I ever got to see the nickel samurai on a TV like this. Ah, I can't believe I just made a joke about dying, all things considered. What's this? What is this thing? An antenna, I guess? And this is a VCR? Those don't exist no more. There sure are a lot of electronic gadgets here. But what is an antenna doing here? Mind you guys, this is a 2002 game. So VCR was the tech, okay? Let's check out this futuristic computer. Actually, JK, this is 2018. <laughs> I forgot. So even though this game came out in 2002, I think the actual year in game is 2018. So, six years ago. Oh, hey, it's a computer. I've never really used one before. Hmm, I have no idea where the power switch on this thing is. Drat. There comes my plan to use this somehow to get out of here. What's this? There's a framed picture sitting on this coffee table. It's a picture of a woman. She's kind of pretty. Hey, it looks like something's written here. Let's see. I think it says, with love, Celeste. I bet this could be a clue. Burr. In 2018, we moved our satellite dishes inside. <laughs> That's weird. What's a figurine doing on a sofa in a place like this? Figurine? Wait, it's not a plush? I think it's a bear. How cute. But it's got a lot of cuts and slits on it. I wonder if it's some kind of puzzle or something? Okay, that makes sense for a figurine then. It's so dark in here that I can barely see, but... These kind of feel like videotapes. All of them. Just what kind of room is this? Because it's... Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it's like one of those uh, interlocks. Oh, 
Okay. Anything else? I guess just the door. <laughs> Locked, of course. And it doesn't look like I can use the car to open this door. There's a little hole at the bottom of the door. It only has a little skinnier. You ate too many hamburgers, Maya. Then maybe I'd be able to crawl through here. Oh, this simply will not do. I cannot have you wandering around at will. <laughs> it seems that your Mr. Wright is truly concerned about you. He is? For now, I would suggest you remain cooperative. If you cannot, there are ways in which I can help you. Ways? You mean... Dead men tell no tales, is how the saying goes, correct? The, the, the dead I'm almost certain I told you on our first meeting. I am an assassin. No way. You're lying. I mean, an assassin? People are not always who they appear to be. And then he chokes me out. Literally just rings me in the neck and I'm like, eh! <laughs> it's so scary. I don't like that he's all colored red. Mr. Nick? Hmm? Oh, yes, Pearls. Got caught up in my thoughts about Maya's situation. Mr. Edward has left, you know. I guess for now, I have no choice but to believe in Mr. On Guard. But I think I should listen to his story one more time. Alright, let's get going too. Okay. This patient's undergoing rehabilitation. Wasn't that the same patient standing at the same spot the last time you came to visit? Stop, Hody. Doesn't look like they've moved any closer to the reception desk, huh? Is the clinic really doing anything? Is that patient get early getting better? Hmm. Hey, don't just cut into my monologue like that. I'm explaining things here. Uh, sorry. Mm, yes, mm, most sorry. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, never mind. I don't want to voice this guy no more. I was like trying to be all sentimental that this is exactly like my second home, but no, no. At least I haven't had like a super creep in this hospital yet. I'm sorry, but visiting hours are over for today. Aww. Ugh, I have too many questions I need to ask. I'm sorry, but I'm Phoenix Wright, a lawyer for one of the... You're Mr. Wright, you say. Oh, yeah. There's a message here for you. A message? That's from Matt on guard. Yeah, here you are. What did he write? Is it something really important? I don't know. Well, let's see what it has to say. To Mr. Lawyer Dude, I've got re something really important to tell you. Why do I feel uneasy all of a sudden? Oh, Mr. Wright. So, actually, I have a favor to ask of you. I have a cat named Shu. Uh, I didn't put out a lot of food when I left the house, so he's probably pretty hungry. You think you could drop by my house and feed Shu for me, dude? My house is just a little ways down the hotel, right? This is terrible. Let's hurry. We have to feed his cat. I'm sure poor Shu's stomach is growling by now. Yeah, I guess. That's note jammed into a pocket. <laughs> a client's request is a request. Guess I should go to check up on his cat. Alright. Let's go over here. Wow. Everybody looks really busy with something or another. Hmm, they're probably strengthening the evidence for tomorrow's trial. Hey, hurry up with that, will ya? Pass the victims list around. You've gotta be kidding! There's over a hundred people on here! Um, Mr. Nick? Is Mr. On Guard really that big and bad of a criminal? Actually, Pearls, never mind. It sounds like they're working on a different case. Alright. Let's go to the hotel. Now 
All right now, Mr. Nick. Let's go look for clues. We have to, for Mystic Maya's sake. We better have hidden something in the shoe and not actually named his cat shoe. <laughs> it's like, but what about the cats that are named Socks? I think that's a cute name. Socks is a cute name. <laughs> you shall not pass. Oh God, it's her. <gasps> this old bag. Don't devalue my name and turn it into a gas, you spiky-headed bedded fogger. Because of you, I've been made to look like a bad guy again. Although, I, I did get a piece of gum from Edgy Boy, just as he promised. But there's something much more valuable. I want Edgy Boy's heart. I want it all for me. It's all your fault. You've awakened that wild beast inside of this old bag. Ah! ah! Miss Old Bag. Keep your hands off of me. This helmet is airtight. No air is getting in, and no air gets out. Um, then why do you keep putting it on? Huh. Don't think you can get me with to move with silly questions. You're gonna have to defeat me if you want to get by. I'm not hearing this. Old bag. Night of the murder. Uh. Huh. You have a million light years too early to be, uh, to be asking me questions, whippersnapper. Uh, looks like I'm only gonna get an... The only uh, looks like the only way I'm gonna get any investigating done is to first do something about this kooky alien. All right. Listen, I got the goods. Check this out. Maybe if I show her this letter I got from Edgeworth. Um, this old bag. If you would look at what? You want me to look at this worthless piece of? Auntie Pooh. Oh, is that her perfume? Pheromone d'amour. I smell. Ugh. Let's see here. Would you please allow this unsophisticated young person to conduct his investigation? Yours truly, Miles Edgeworth. Yours truly. Huh. That man's good at flattery. Fine. But only because Ejipu said so, you understand. <laughs> no, I just thought of something I have to do. Remember, no messing around. You do anything bad, and I won't let you off the hook. It looks like she has strong feelings for Mr. Edgeward. That may be, but you don't know... You know, nothing's gonna come from it. That's so mean, Mr. Nate. Feelings are meant to be told and shared. Ah! Every time we talk about love, I always end up in a, with a handprint on my face somehow. Oh, <gasps> did she slap him? <laughs> uh, so anyway, let's continue our investigation. Okay. Oh, you're back. No, Pearl. I think she jumps up and slaps him. I think so, too. It's acceptable if this cat looks like he's wearing exactly one shoe. Okay. I'll take that. I'll take that. Ugh! Oh, what? What now? One little thing before I forget, dearie. You can't go into N God's room today. Hi. The police main's investigation is going to be in there all day, you hear? I wonder if they're the team in charge of investigating the killer. So don't go in there. Set one foot in there and you'll face the wrath of Wendy Old Bag. Alright. Let's go... There's a living room? I'll just go back here first. Looks like we're the only ones here. And yet, the hotel seems so busy somehow. Probably because the police is scouring for clues about the killer. I don't see anything. I really hope there isn't, like, something new. I want to eat a meal with Mystic Maya again. Yeah, me too. Whenever I watch Mystic Maya eat like she does, it makes me happy about eating, and then I can eat a lot. Well then, how about after we wrap up this case, we all go out for a, f a huge 20-course feast. Okay, let's work really hard then. They are so cute. It's a grand set of doors over there. It's, a, it's the doors Maya fo followed the bellboy out of, only to disappear. If only we'd all gone together. 
because you didn't think twice. Hey, city boy! Lotta, you're, you're still here. Reckon course! An investigative photographer eats or starves on her ability to snap up the scoop, yeah? And this hotel just has the aura of mystery. You yeah, know? Like, something's always about to happen. But, you have a camera? Wreck given! A photographer has got to have cameras out the ear like corn to be a real pro, you know? So I'm hanging around here. Speaking of cameras and feet in the mouth, do you have mine, you bread thief? Why can't you just drop that thief thing already? Tell me about the murder. I want to ask you about the night of the murder. What? You're really gonna shell out the bucks for the info I got? Lana, you were loitering in this hallway the night of the murder, were you not? Well, kinda, but... Brace yourself, Phoenix. Here it comes. I, I didn't exactly hang around here for the entire time, you know? Followed a few stars around, got a few autographs, shook a few hands, had a soda pop with a few of them too. Looks like she wasn't here the entire time that night. Security lady also wasn't in this hallway the whole time either. I guess this means there's no one who can tell us who came and went that night. So, how about the note that was inside your camera case? Oh, that little ditty I wrote? Yeah. Can I believe what you've written? You mean, the stuff about on guard shoving his manager lady onto Corita? Yeah. Uh, well, I reckon you best not be believing that. What? Look, I, I sort of wrote that on a whim, you know? Writing whatever came to mind. Whatever came to mind? Yeah, when you get down to it, it's just a lot of random bull dooters. Hey, what's with ya? Why are you staring at me like my grandpa used to? Huh. Hey, why do you look like you suddenly got older too? Or am I just shrinking here? Um... I hate... <laughs> Lotta. It's like I... I... I hate you so much, but at the same time, I don't hate you. I just kind of want to strangle you, but I don't hate you. Ah, my baby! My 1,600 baby! Dollar baby. What's with that red coat of prosecutor anyhow? That guy told me it was evidence and refused to give it back to me. Well, that's kind of how it is. Hey, hey! You're that red coat's friend, aren't you? So, put in a good few words for me and get me back my camera. You want me to do what? Listen, I got real good for about five hours, and I guarantee you give it back. Why don't you do your own dirty work? Well, I reckon it's time for me to get going. A tabloid photographer with that camera is just a tabloid, huh? Um, yeah, I guess so. Keep yourself together out there, you hear? I'm coming to see you in court tomorrow. Okay, I'll see you then. And you too there, little one. Keep up the good work, okay? Okay. Don't be picky about your food now. Okay. And make sure you do all your homework, you hear? Okay. And if you happen to find yourself a camera, make sure you bring it to- Would you please just leave already? Uh, it's funny. Compared to the flowers on the other side of the hall, these are much more gorgeous. Let's see, record companies, fan clubs, company workers. Carrying all these flowers home would be hard, I think. Well, he's kind of dead, so it doesn't matter. From all your grateful clients. All right, let's uh go to Corita's room, I guess. Oh, who's making these noises? Uh, uh. Mr. Nick! What is that otherworldly ghastly moaning? Uh, 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 uh. I hate evil ghosts! Ah! 
I don't think it's a ghost. Maybe it's a demon? Excuse me, watch me- watch who you're calling a demon, brat! I don't even know what voice I want to give her anymore. Ah! Zoinks! Zoinks! It's the alien! How are you calling an alien? I'm, I'm, I just refuse to read that now. Oh, it's just you, Miss Old Bag. What are you doing here? How, how'd you get past us? What is wrong with you youngins nowadays? I came down here to pay my respects to my poor Juan, and you're disturbing me. But why are you here? Okay, talk to me. Please, just talk to me one more time about the murder. I talked about it plenty at the trial. I was fooled, tricked, deceived by that fraud of a photographer and her note. She was loitering around here with that imbecilic look on her face. With that imbecilic look on her face. Okay, got it. Now hold on a second there, you little pipsqueak. If you're going to take notes, at least make me sound better than that. Oh, alright. Now I've seen everything. But you know, I was working that night too, doing my job, minding my own business. So it's not like I had to waste standing around here the whole night. Okay, tell me about your memories. She does kind of look like a Scooby-Doo character, yeah. I was wondering if you could tell me a bit more about Mr. Krita. He was the most popular star, you know. Especially where it counts in my books. I had to like... I had to like wash my mouth off of Lada just so I could properly voice Old Bag. Cause old, I'm trying to make Old Bag like old lady. But I, I too much Lada in my in my brain, I guess. A lot of Lada in my brain, right? <laughs> but I heard that he was lagging around in the polls against Mr. On Guard. Um Well, that's just a recent thing. Bad luck and all that, you know? But he was gonna become an even bigger star than he used to be. Look, just look at the mountain of presents. It's a show of the mountain of feelings all his fans had for him. Yeah, the mountain is pretty big. It's certainly nothing to shake a stick at. Mr. Nick? Hmm, what is it, Pearls? The presents. They're all bears, right? Just got a point. There isn't a single thing here that isn't a bear. Imagine, okay, we're going back to this, okay? If I become a star, I want all of my fans to give me hedgehogs. So instead of bears, I want a scene like this full of hedgehogs and where I'm not dead, okay? That's, th that is the type of scene that I want in the future. What kind of star will you be? That is for the future to know and for me to find out. But one day, when I am a star, I expect hedgehogs. A hedgehog star? <laughs> Alright, tell me about the presents. All of Mr. Krita's presents are as fans seem to be bears. Oh, that's because you can't think of Juan without thinking about bears. Bears? Why bears? You don't know? When my dear Juan was training, he fought barehanded with a bear. He refused to give in and let the bear win, but after the fight, they became friends. Wow, what a heartwarming story. Oh. It's just in those young people's dramas, I can see those two tuckered out. Down by the river going, hey, you, you sure can fight. You too, bub, you too. Did all that really happen? It's in his biography, bub. What a load of crock. So ever since then, fans have been giving him bears as presents. Yeah, nice. Bears. Interesting. So I should fight a hedgehog. And then make that, like, iconic for my career. And then people will associate me with hedgehogs because we end up being friends after our fist fight, right? That... <laughs> Sounds like you need to get working on a biography. All right, all right. Let me know if you need to go, sorry. Okay, I'm hiring. 
please, please send in your application to to the unlisted email somewhere. <laughs> um, is there anything else I wanted to show her? Nah, I don't think so. So that's a bed. Yep, it's big, but it's a bed. Ah, Mr. Nick, it's so soft. How easily entertained are the children? Why does he have, like, all these cute bears? It's, like, I like this angry one, right? But who gave him this? Wow, there are a lot of bears. Alarm clock ones, collector's edition, stuffed teddies, plastic models. It's pretty overwhelming. Is there any kind of bear he doesn't have? There's even a few in the trash can. Yeah, I get the feeling maybe the guy really didn't like bears. Or teddies. It's hard to bear with all these problems. Ah, 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 ah. I don't think I want to bear with the trauma the last case has caused me. He has too much trauma. Poor Phoenix. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? Pain. Me too. I also have PTSD from the last one also. Speaking of nobody like that case, no. It's so messy here. I think I've read this before. I... I I'm just trying to make sure there isn't anything new, but I feel that we've already read all this. Okay. So, the Nickel Samurai's costume was in here. Yeah. I can't believe Mr. Kurita went so far. Just to say bad things about Mr. On Guard. Well, it was a press conference, so he had to go in costume. But weren't Mr. On Guard and Mr. Kurita friends? They weren't friends. Uh, they couldn't be friends because they were rivals. So, a rival is someone who is a strong enemy. Rose is really fired up over this. I don't have an answer for her. Hold on. Maybe around there should be good. Okay. Uh, it's a beautiful wine glass and there's just tomato juice in it. Ew, tomato juice? I don't really like it much. There's a bottle of it on the table over there, and that's probably where it came from. It's like all the way over here. Anything else? No, okay. Bye! Alright, let's go to this living room. On guard mansion, living room. Mmm. Sure is dark. I'll go turn on a light. I wonder if it's really tomato juice and not actually wine that was censored. I... Mmm. That's probably what it was. To make it, like, rated E for everyone, they're like, Ooh, maybe we can't put wine in here. How about we just... We, we, we just make it tomato juice instead. But if it was always tomato juice, they, they'd be interesting. Oh. Wow. So this is what a star's house look like. looks like. Must be nice to be rich. Would you guys consider this rich living? Would, would, would you walk into a house like this? Would you be like, dang, this guy is loaded. Game about murder can't mention why it sounds right to me. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Nick. Let's find Shu, the kitty cat. Shu! So, I guess this is Shu. Ah, what a lovely cat. Hello, Shu. <laughs> the cat seems to like pearls. Pardon me. May I help you with something, Mr... Oh, uh, 
We're lawyers. Actually, I'm, I'm Mr. On Guard's lawyer? The master's... Then you must be Mr. Wright. Yes. Ah, it's a pleasure to meet your one to meet your wonderful self. I am the family butler, John Doe. Phoenix, wouldn't you like squinty eyes at that name at all? No? Nice to meet you. May I mean, sure, may yeah, maybe there is a John Doe that exists out there, but Phoenix, I feel like you would be the first one to be squinty eyes at that name. And, okay, why- why is On Guard telling you to feed the cat if he has a butler? Huh? Unless the butler is like purposely ignoring the cat. Tell me about Matt On Guard. You must know all sorts of things about Mr. On Guard, right? Honestly, sir, I don't believe my master is capable of such a foul deed as a murder. And, uh, anything else? No. Not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the master or his affairs. Hmm, how typically butler-like, as it were. Mr. Doe, how long have you served at this residence? Well, sir, I would have to say, maybe about one year. And, uh, anything else? No. Not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of himself and his affairs. You know, I would have thought Miss Ungard the kind to have a maid over a butler. Shoot. That's a very cute cat you've got here. It is my duty to take care of him. The master rather fancy shoe. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the family cat. Well, then I guess I don't need this piece of scrap paper anymore. Crumpled into a ball and thrown away. Well, I'm afraid I must take my leave of you now. Oh, we should probably get ourselves- get going ourselves. Ah, so young and yet already so accomplished. A master of law. That there is also a lot to be proud of of being a butler in charge of the house and all. Thank you for the compliments, sir. People are not always who they appear to be. Now, if you'll excuse me. Uh, a giant bicycle is flying through the air! A bicycle pearls? is one where you don't have to pedal, and it moves on its own. Really? Wow! But sorry to disappoint you, it can't fly. Oh, that's too bad. It's a very comfortable- Would you sit on this- this couch? Knowing there is literally... a whole motorcycle above your head? <laughs> Just being... Suspended by what looks like thin wire. Hi, White. Hello, hello. Maybe for five seconds to admire it. Ooh, look, you're moving again. Yes, I am moving again. How's it going? Happy Friday. I hope... I feel like it's really late for you over there. But I hope you had a good day at work. Doing all right? Good. Good deal. I wonder if famous stars drop by and sit around and have a good time. In any case, I don't really belong here, do I? Ugh. What is with me and feeling inferior today? It's 2.10 a.m.? Oh, sheesh. Gonna head to bed now? Yeah, it's late. Get some rest. Good night. But thank you for dropping by. But I set up obs. Ooh, you're gonna be gaming. That's right, it is Friday. Maybe, maybe you're off tomorrow. What's this? This looks fake as heck. Oh, there's a giant cooking hearth here. I am off tomorrow. Nice. All right. Live it up, dude. Get some rest, though. That, uh, it's pretty late. 
That's actually a fireplace. How are they different, Mr. Nick? You know, I've never actually seen a hearth before, come to think of it. Good night, White. Thank you again for dropping by. You should, uh, bleh. <laughs> you should come visit, come and visit Fay Manor, then. Ugh. I'll show you one when I do. When you do. Gosh. I have to, like, really adjust. Oh, what's up here? There's another door over there. You should go wandering over there, Mr. Nick. Yes, Pearls. Now I know how Maya feels when I tell her to stop playing around. <laughs> There's a small door at the bottom of the bigger door, Mr. Nick. And that is for Mr. Ungard's cat to use. Oh, you mean shoe. The door. It's locked tight. Well, I guess that's to keep nosy people for, like, me from entering it. Ah, there are masks here. Yeah, the one in the middle is the steel samurai. The ones next to that are the pink princess and the evil magistrate. They fought many battles against the backdrop of Neo Tokyo. Wow, you really know a lot about Steel Samurai, Mr. Nick. I don't know whether to laugh or cry that I know more about that show than a kid. It's okay, Phoenix. It's okay to like a kid's show. There's nothing wrong with that. Can I go in here now, please? I wonder if there's anything... Oh my god, that scared me. The actual jump scare? What is this? I'm Uncle Bear, and I say it's barely 8 o'clock! What is that infernal racket? It's one of the presents going off. Sounds like it's already 8 p.m., way past your bedtime. Ugh, that startled me. I thought I was gonna die for a second. 8 p.m. That's the time when the award ceremony ended that night, remember? Time sure flies. Hard to believe it's been two days since the ceremony. The transceiver. Hello? Hello? This is not a phone. Oh, it's Maya. Maya! How is Maya? You haven't hurt- Oh, never mind, it's not her. You haven't hurt her, have you? It seems you were not able to fulfill your end of the bargain, Mr. Attorney. I have heard the news, so it would seem my present did you no good. No! Mystic Maya! One more day, please. All I ask is just one more day. I'll, I'll get a not guilty verdict for this time. For sure this time. Please. I suppose if I must. I need that acquittal more than anything else, after all. Please. Please let Maya say something. I want to hear she's alright. Alright. Then. A little. What is with the static all of a sudden? Hello? Hello? It seems... bad. Connect? Damn it, did the transceiver just suddenly break? Excuse me. What happened? I don't know. All of a sudden it became nothing but static. It's like Maya! Why did the transceiver suddenly break like that? I should probably have an electronics expert look at it. The sooner the better. Hey. You! Why were you yelling like that? I don't know which clock it was. Hmm. Well, guess there's nothing there.
Can somebody... No? G -g Gumshoe? Hey, welcome back, pal. I thought I'd make you a little something for dinner. Th uh, that's nice. Thanks. A rich man's luxurious full-course meal. Out of a can, that is. Uh, I'm sorry you went through all the trouble to cook, but I don't have time to eat. Oops. Looks like you don't have a can opener, pal. You gotta be kidding. And here I thought he had already whipped something up. Oh, I know. There is one way I know how to be helpful. Ask me about anything you want, pal. Go ahead. Well, since he's here and offering, I wonder what I should try to ask him about. Can, 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 can you look at this, Plex? The transceiver. Oh, Mr. Nick. You should ask Mr. Scruffy Detective about that thing. What thing? Oh, yeah. This thing just up and broke all of a sudden. It it broke, pal? When I was talking to the kidnapper, it just suddenly broke into static. Look, it sounded like this. I don't hear any static, pal. Huh? Maybe it fixed itself? That's strange. I'm sure I was making a loud static noise. Mm, maybe. Maybe what? Maybe it was electromagnetic in interference, pal. Electromagnetic interference? Uh, so what is this electromagnetic interference? Something that happens when a radio wave gets mixed up with another signal, pal. Oh, when you put it that way. I don't understand what you're talking about. Like, for example, when a cell phone goes off next to a computer screen. The stuff on the screen gets kind of fuzzy. Really? Did that happen before? I, I mean, I didn't have a cell phone at the time with older computers. It starts acting funny, right? Huh? Computer? Um, it's like when you use a dryer next to the TV and the screen starts looking all weird. Oh, yes, the TV does do that. Hmm. Oh, so that's what you're talking about. She seems amazingly happy at being able to understand this. So, the room you were in when that tr interference to the transceiver happened... I read that all wrong, but whatever. There's got to be something there that send out very strong radio waves, pal. I remember my computer speakers used to buzz when I got a text. I found my phone next to the audio cables. Man. Quite a time. Something like... Hmm. Like, like a listening device or something. Ah! Oh. Hey, speaking of that, where were you when it happened? We were in Mr. Corita's room. The scene of the murder. What? That's it. I'm going to sneak into the precinct to get a bug sweeper. I'll meet you at the crime scene later, alright, pal? But, 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 it's already 8 p.m. Uh, uh, wheat gumshoe. Oh yeah, baby. It's investigating time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. Yeah! <laughs> we should be going too, Mr. Nick. Alright, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's pumped. I'm pumped. We're all pumped. Oh, where am I going? Okay. <laughs> Let's wait. He didn't... Okay. Just, just, just making sure. Making sure. Here we go. Hey! You're finally here, pal! Sorry to keep you waiting. You have the... um... bug sweeper? Uh, well, you see, I got butts to try to sneak in, pal. Then suddenly, I'm staring at the precinct doors. From the outside, I mean. So, yeah, I couldn't get one of the police bug sweepers. What do you mean you couldn't get one? We need that item! Hey, calm down, pal. I didn't say I didn't get one, just not the police's. Wow, so this is a bug sweeper. It looks a little... broken? Hey, this was made when I was in elementary school, pal. Oh? By who? Me, of course. Uh, seeing this sure brings back memories. 
Hey, don't look down on it, pal. Sure, it looks a little beat up. But I put my heart and soul into building this puppy here. Your heart and soul? It'll work. Trust me, pal. It'll do the job. But... But... But you can't set the sensitivity. So it's gonna be... It's going to be that anything that gives off electromagnetic magnetic waves. But isn't it better that way? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Well, anyway, since I brought it all this way, might as well give it a whirl, right, pal? I'm getting that sinking feeling again. Okay, now, I'll tell you how to use this baby. Which is a listening device or something? Some other sort of bug hidden in this room, pal. So we're gonna find it, right? Right. Now, first, let's turn the sweeper on. Next, move the sweeper around to give the room a real thorough looksy, pal. The sweeper will let you know how strong of a signal it's picking up, so keep an eye on it, alright? Once you find something that's giving off a lot of radio waves, press ENTER to lock onto it. There's a lot of things here that's going to give off radio waves. So let's take a good look at everything and everything that seems suspicious, okay, pal? Alright, I'm gonna go stand outside and keep an eye out. Give me a yell if you find a, if you find the bug. Got it, pal? Imagine if like the tomato juice just went nuts. How big is that? Like Okay, that makes sense. Man, even the calculator? What? That's a clock too! Shouldn't that be peeking it off? This is... This is just a giant stuffed teddy bear, right? It's the biggest one I have ever seen! Hey, so did you guys find it yet? The listening device, I mean... No, not yet. But this bear's eye is... Let's see, let's see. A perfectly normal stuffed bear with some really strong radio waves. Sounds like you found the device to me, pal. Let's dig this big, big fella's eye out and see what we got. No, you can't. It's such, such a violent act. Oof. No! Th that's... It's a miniature camera. And it looks like there's more. There's a transmitter and a timer. A what a what emitter? A transmitter, pal. Oh, is this more of that high tech stuff? Yeah. So this tiny thing is a camera? Yep. It's a pinhole CCD camera, pal. It's small, high grade video. High grade video camera mostly uses security systems. So it's a video camera. It runs on a battery, which comes with it in a set. But there's no videotape in this camera. This is the only camera part here, pal. The tape recorder with the tape inside it is somewhere else. Somewhere else? The footage is changed into radio waves and then it's sent to that recorder. So it's sort of like a TV broadcast, isn't it? Hey, you know, you're right. Set to record the victim's room from 8 p.m. for one hour, resorting at the time of the murder. How do you know that? So what is a transmitter? It's a device that sends the footage uh, the camera took to a specific destination. It's like a video version of a listening device, pal. It looks like it's attached to a small clock-like thing. Oh, that's a timer, pal. You can set it to turn the camera on and record at a certain time with it. You can set it for a certain time? Yep. Let's see. This looks like it was set to start at 8 p.m. and go for one hour. 8 p.m.? That was the time the word ceremony ended. There's no date set, so it's been recording every night, I'd guess. 
Mr. Detective, how long has this bear been here? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's been here since the night of the murder. Then... then maybe... Maybe this camera... caught the murder on tape! Wh what And if you think about the angle the bear is at... It's bound to have had a clear shot of the whole crime, pal. So, there was a camera in this bear's eye. And it was disguised as a present. I'm sure it was here on the night of the murder, pal. It's pretty big, so it stands out pretty well in my mind. But, who gave Mr. Karita this present? I, uh, don't know, pal. But, this means that someone out there has got a video of what happened here tonight. Isn't there any way we can find out who that person is? It's impossible, pal. Radio waves can be sent almost anywhere, so there's no real way to find out. Oh. Is there really no way to find find out? My camera was set in this right eye found in the victim's room. I got it! Wh what Hey, pal, let me borrow this mini camera for a bit. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna go around to see, uh, to the electronic shops and see if I can find out who bought this. But that's impossible. I mean, it's already 9 p.m. Leave it to me. Even if it's search all night, I'll find your man, pal. Oh, gumshoe. Oh yeah, baby, it's investigating time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. Yeah! He's so excited. He's like, not getting paid. But he's so excited. He's just that passionate. He's gone. Yeah. But Mr. Scruffy Detective sure is a nice man. He's pushing himself so hard, all for Mystic Maya's sake. It's a mystery how you always manage to do things in the most inefficient ways, right? Ugh. You'll have to excuse me. I heard your conversation just now. E Edgeworth, what are you doing here? A rescue team has been created and deployed. I can't say I'm optimistic, but we have to move forward, one step at a time. Uh, I see. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. You still have to find her. Hmm. So there was a spy camera hidden inside this stuffed animal, huh? You are one lucky man, right? Do you know this stuffed bear, little girl? Um, I have no idea. Hmm, of course not. The maker of this bear is a very expensive luxury brand from overseas. It's completely handmade and only a small number of those are exported here. What? Camera and transmitter that Scatterbrain Detective took with him are dead ends. Things like those can be bought anywhere. However, this bear is different. By tracking how it got into this country, this bear can tell us who the buyer is. Can you really do that? Mr. Nick, can he really? Well, I guess so. Hmm. It's 9 p.m. I think I can still make it in time. I'll be taking this. Okay, so Edgeworth just hauls the big old bear that's like towering over him. Just picks it up, slings it under his shoulder, his arm, walks out with it. I'm sure you have other things you could, you have to do. Stuffed bear snatched up by Edgeworth. See you soon, right? Wait! What? Why are you doing this? I have no interest in explaining myself to someone who cannot comprehend. But besides that, right? Until a court reconvenes tomorrow, you should concern yourself with this question. Who was the person that murdered Juan Corrida? The real killer. Do you really still think it was Adrian Andrews? To be honest, I don't know anymore. You still have a little time left. Find the truth, right? Everything begins with the truth. One fruit is real killer. It's Andrew's pass. The kidnapper whose sole condition is an acquittal for Mr. On Guard. 
and this card. Shelly the Killer. Maya. The only way I can save you now is to find all the answers to this case tonight. I don't understand what your real intentions are, Edgeworth. But as you said, all I can do for now is find the truth. To be continued. Wow, it was only one hour and 30-ish minutes, like 40 minutes. I'm s <sighs> oh, 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 wait, it's more investigation. Okay, I thought it was going to throw us right into the court case and I was going to be in pain because I, I know that the court case is long. This one... Once it gets to like the second half of the the trials, it it's long. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna run a three minute ad, so that way we are an hour free of any ad. So with those three minutes, I am gonna take a break, walk around, stretch, get some water, and then I'll be back from where he's attorney because. I want to finish at least the investigation and then hopefully wrap up by next week. That is kind of the plan. Um, but okay, I'm going to take, take a quick break and then we'll continue playing more.
All right, thank you guys for waiting. I just took Butterball to the restroom and he should be good to go. And now we play part two of the investigation. All right, let's get it. It's past 9 p.m. already, isn't it? I wonder. I wonder if Mr. Edgeworth has already found Mystic Maya. These things take time. I'd probably say not. Say probably not. The police are professionals, Pearls. They'll find her, so don't you worry. And if we can win a guilty verdict tomorrow, uh, win a not ver guilty verdict tomorrow, then everything will be okay. You're right. So, the real person who killed Mr. Corita was... Did you stretch? I... Sort of? Not... You know what, now I feel guilty. Give me a sec. I did it- I stretched my legs! I walked around for like two seconds and then I- I stretched to- to give Butterball his- his- his, uh... What do you call that? His is his pee and poo time. Well, now I'm stretching my arms because I feel guilty. <laughs> you know what I could do? Give me a sec. I could stand. That would work, right? Look, there. Now I'm standing, okay? <laughs> I'm standing now. Not assassin, Mr. Shelley the killer, right? And the card Miss Andrew is found at the cream of, uh, cream of the crime. Crime of the scene. Crime scene seems to be proof of that. Now, I was going to say something about stretching when cold, so you actually were correct. Something, something warm up being stretching. Yeah. <laughs> If that's the case, then a new question comes to mind. Who was the one that hired the killer to begin with? Who is his client? You mean, who asked for the murder? That person didn't want to dirty their own hands in blood. But whoever this client is, they're still a killer. I actually have to stretch now on account of being old and decrepit, so I'm something of an expert. Yeah, I was told, like, the... One of the top recommendations from 30-year-olds to 20-year-olds is to stretch, especially your hamstrings. Just stretch often, but especially your hamstrings. And like squats, oh my god, my arm, my leg just popped. And squats are, are something to, to not take for granted, I guess. So I do like the slob squat, the Asian squat, every other chance that I get at work. Because it's 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 I need my knees to be stronger. I, I, I hear ya. I got stretching is good. Even if it isn't like running or or super activity exercise, stretching helps a lot. <laughs> Assassin's client. Well, who could have hired the assassin? Do you think it was Miss Andrews? I wonder. But if she was the client, then why go through the effort to stab the knife into the corpse herself? But if Miss Andrews wasn't the client, then no, he can't be. Not on guard himself? Was it, Matt? You know what, actually, let me double check something real quick. 
Miss Andrews was carrying it was placed next to the victim at the time of the murder. Okay, so it was next to what's his face? Juan. Corita. Was it not? If, this, if Mr. Engard really did hire the assassin, then he is not incident, in, innocent at all. Far from it. He would be guilty of the crime. You know what? I'm gonna do something real quick. I'm gonna switch this around. But it can't be Mr. Engard, right? I mean, when we first talked with him? Mr. Engard, I'd like you to ha I'd like to ask you one more question. Did you kill Mr. Juan Cordita? Did you? Did you kill him? I'm actually gonna put this. I'm trying to like adjust the windows on my computer right now. Okay, there we go. All right, just so we're clear, dude. I didn't kill anyone, and that includes Juan Corita, okay? I didn't see any psych locks at that time. Actually, that reminds me. Did you remember something, Mr. Nick? Yeah, something Miss Andrews said at the trial today. She said something interesting. Something interest. I don't even remember what she said. Um, so what is this interesting thing? Oh, that's right. You didn't hear it, did you, Pearls? Juan had bet everything on the Jam and Ninja this year. And if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought, anyway. It looked like somehow, Juan had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Not Mr. On Guard's secret? What is a secret? I don't know yet. But for now, let's think about it this way. Mr. Corita was going to reveal this secret. That means... Mr. On Guard had plenty of motive to have Mr. Corita silenced. Which means, we had to meet Mr. with Mr. On Guard. There's no way around it now. So... We on the move? We on the move. Gatewater Hotel. Hallway. Wow, it's really getting late, isn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it's past 9 p.m. already. But we still have some things to prepare for tomorrow's trial. There's still the matter of the secret Mr. Corita held about Mr. On Guard. And Miss Andrew's real intentions. These are two things I must know tonight. But aren't visiting hours over at the detention center? Hmm. I'm sure we'll think of something, Pearls. Don't you worry. Don't you worry about a thing. Cause every little thing is gonna be alright. Old bag. Hey, wait! What is it, whippersnapper? All I know... Uh, all I know is nothing that has anything to do with you is ever good. Like, just now, I was handed this strange device for who knows what reason. And I was told to use it to search the whole hotel. That's... the book sweeper, isn't it? The one that Gumshoe made. I don't know, and frankly, I don't care. But the request came from Edgy Poo, so... Edgeworth. And he said, If you feel angry, direct your anger at the unsophisticated lawyer. So, I'm gonna feel free to direct all my anger towards you. Ugh, oh, gee. Thanks a bundle, Edgeworth. What a pal you are. This is absolutely top secret, so you better keep it to yourself. I heard they found a spy camera hidden in one of the presents. Hmm, very interesting. I'm sure it was, you know. It was a catch for Juan in the middle of those scandalous meetings. Scandalous? What's that? It means, well, you know, 
that gossip that's been going around about my dear Juan. Oh, you mean that thing about Miss Andrews? But I'm sure she must have had some reason for getting close to Mr. Karita. I'll let you in on another secret, youngin. I know who planted that spy camera. It was that obnoxious, puffy-haired photographer girl that nerved some people. Spy on people by herself, as if I would want to see it for myself, too. Wow, the alien actually admitted her true intentions for a change. I don't know what you're, ex uh, what you're thinking exactly, but I can bet that it's something good. I didn't say anything. So, you want to know about Juan and that manager, right? Actually, as I hear it, there was something of a refreshing pair of those two. Oh? I tell you, Juan really welcomed that manager with open arms, I heard. That manager? What are you talking about? You don't know? That manager woman Juan- that manager woman Juan had. It's a shame she killed herself, though. Oh, you're talking about Miss Celeste's impacts. Miss Andrew's mentor, right? Yes, yes, that's the one. That Celeste girl. She was supposed to get married, you know? Married? You mean, to Mr. Karita? <sighs> really? You young kids today don't know anything, do you? That girl Celeste killed herself three days after their marriage announcement. Three days after their marriage announcement? What in the- Why would Miss Max want to kill herself? She was going to get married! Well, that's because she was thrown away, you see, by Juan. What? But they were going to get married, right? They promised each other, right? They held the grand announcement session, but three days later, Juan suddenly canceled their marriage. Is that true? It was in the weekly magazines. Oh, hi! Why did he do that? That was not in the magazines, unfortunately. I see. That night, after Juan called off the wedding, that manager, Celeste, killed herself. How terrible. I wonder what happened between those two. Okay. Bye. I really hope we don't have to talk to you again. Whimsical music returns! Right. <laughs> On that night, there must have been at least a few hundred people here. I guess the police are done with their questioning and investigating. It looks like there are things here in the lobby have finally calmed down. Well, I don't care about what's here. I want to go. Where do I want to go? Back to his living room! Looks like no one's around. Um, what happened to that person with the stuffed teddy face? Oh, she must mean the butler with the stitches on his face. Shoo! Oh, there you are. I guess you're still awake, huh, Shoo? <laughs> Come on, let's play! I wonder the butler, Mr. Doe, is already asleep or not. I like how you're just able to get in here. Is this door open, by the way? Never mind. Okay. Um, let's go here, I guess. It feels sort of, sort of tense in here, doesn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it does. I wonder if something happened. You're Mr. On Guard's lawyer, right? Uh, yes, sir. Well, we finally found just the person we've been looking for. A real decisive witness. A, deci a decisive witness? You mean for the On Guard case? We're taking the witness's statements right now. We gotta hand it to Mr. Edgeworth. What's Edward up to now? Who is this witness? I think you know this person quite well, Mr. Lawyer. M Mr. Nick? Between the kidnapper's demand and now this, I can't see any way to win here. Oh yeah. Mr. Edgeworth wanted me to tell you something. He did? 
Even though visiting hours are long over at the detention center, he wanted me to grant you special permission, so there you go. What? I've already called them, so they know. Go on, go talk to your heart's content. Thank you very much. This is such good news, Nick. Mr. Nick. Go talk to your heart's content. Sounds like the police are pretty sure they have tomorrow's trial in the bag. Hmm. Is there anything new here before I go there? It doesn't look like Mr. Scruffy Detective is here. Well, he's out there with that camera asking around at all the electronic stores. Then I'll make some salad for him uh, for dinner. It looks like Pearls really appreciates what Gumshoe is doing for us. Mm, yes, sir, Nick. Hmm, yes. Where's the lettuce? I don't think I've ever bought lettuce before. Aw, I guess I have to give up on making a salad then. Just, just make salad out of other stuff. You don't need no lettuce. Guess the lack of lettuce is kind of a problem. Alright. Detention center. Who's first? I'm sure they must have transferred Miss Andrews here by now. So that means that both Mr. On Guard and Miss Andrews are in this detention center. Now whose story do I want to hear? Let's start out with Adrian Andrews. Since we last saw her. Oh, it's you. I'm sorry to be visiting at such a late hour. But there are a few questions I absolutely have to ask you tonight. Me? I thought your client was Matt. I'm sure Miss Andrew knows something. Andrews knows something. She can't be clueless about the secret Mr. Corita had on Mr. On Guard. Talk to me, girly. I'd like to ask you about Matt On Guard, if you don't mind. Mr. Wright, you still don't know, don't, do you? The real him, I mean? You seem to bear a lot of resentment towards Mr. On Guard. If that's the case, then why did you become his manager? And why would you become intimate with his rival? That has nothing to do with this case. Nothing. About Miss Celeste's impacts. I have finally put her death behind me. And now, thanks to you, it's all coming back to the surface. I'm sorry. Yes, I was shocked by her suicide. And it's true that when I heard the rumor that Juan was the one who had hidden her suicide note, I began to draw close to him. I wanted to get her suicide note back, and to burn it. You wanted to burn it? But why? I didn't want it to spread just like another piece of gossip. But I never held any murderous intent towards Juan. I would never do something so stupid. Suicide note, huh? I wonder what it said. Why frame him? Why did you try to frame Mr. On Guard? That's simple. Because he's the killer. That's why. Isn't it the duty of every good citizen to inform the police? But there had to be another way. The police are excellent at doing their job, so they'd figure it out, right? Yes. They're so good that they couldn't figure out the real truth behind Celeste's death. Miss Andrews. Well, um, I know you're not the type of person to do something without a reason. So, please tell me why you did what you did. Revenge. Huh? Did you just say something just now? Oh. A jump scare. A psych huh? Don't you understand yet? You're not my lawyer. To be honest, you're more like my enemy. But... I'm sure I just heard Miss Andrews say, Revenge. Do I have... Anything for that? I don't think I do. Alright, what's, what's your damage? Why frame him? Can you please tell me why you framed Mr. On Guard for the murder? I've already told you countless times it's because I thought Matt was the killer. No, that's not it. I know you have a personal reason to dislike Mr. On Guard. Miss Andrews, you may think I didn't hear it, but I know you said something earlier. 
You said revenge. So you're saying I was taking my revenge out on Matt, and that's why? What an absurd idea. I don't have anything I want to ha take revenge for. Miss Andrews. A woman who lives by being dependent on other people. There is something or someone in her past that would make her take revenge? Isn't it just Celeste? Celeste. There's only one catalyst that could cause such strong feelings and even revenge. And that is Miss Impact's suicide. What are you trying to say? Celeste was Juan's manager. On top of that, the one who hit her suicide note was also Juan. This does all have to do with Matt. You're right. You haven't mentioned him yet. But for you to hate Mr. On Guard, it would mean that he must have some relation to Miss Impacts and her suicide. Can you explain to me this relation between Celeste and Matt? Y no, actually. I can't. That one I cannot. Ooh. No, I can't. I, 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 I gotta back out. I got nothing. I got nothing, girly. How about you tell me about what you know about these people instead? Miss Andrews. Oh, Miss Andrews? That things have come to this. I have nothing left to say about that man. Not one word. He is a very prideful man, or rather, was. He absolutely had to compete with Matt and everything, no matter what it was. He was really such an idiot. Miss Andrews? Well, I guess maybe all stars are like that. Never giving any thought to the other people's feelings. Oops. Celeste was my mentor. She was a strong woman. She wouldn't kill herself over any uh, old trifling manner. So... You have some ideas why she killed herself? Yes, I suppose. You know this guy? Tell me about yourself. I hate talking about myself. She hates talking about herself, okay. Alright, I got... Nothing. Oh, Mr. Wright! Please, you have to help me! Uh-oh. Mr. Powers? What happened? Why are you here? Uh, 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 you see, I, I got roped into this somehow? What? Uh, now I'm going to testify at tomorrow's trial. So the decisive witness is Mr. Powers? I was talking with a detective until a while ago, and I was on my way home. When all of a sudden, you there, you're under arrest, and I was brought back here. Oh, they said my face and whole self in general looks suspicious or something. Hmm, well, I, I guess I can see how they thought you looked suspicious. You're still wearing your clothes from that night. Did you shower? I'm just a normal guy on an exercise show for kids. Is that a crime? No, actually, but... What about this testimony you're giving? What are you going to talk about? Uh, I really don't know yet. But it sounds like I saw something pretty important from what they tell me. You saw something important? What was it? Uh, well, the detective told me not to talk about it. You can't tell anyone, especially not that lawyer, he said. Who do you think is that lawyer the detective was talking about? I'm going to take a wild guess and say it's me. Yeah, you, you got it. Mr. Nick! Mystic Maya and myself are your only two allies in this whole world, but it's alright! Ouch. I don't really have a lot of friends, do I? Matt on guard? This is going to do a lot of damage to Matt, you know. Because he's got that refreshing, like, a spring breeze image going. But what is he really like? Well, let's see. Matt's always been kind of a player with women. He would never really turn a pretty face away, if you know what I mean. He'd always say, it's just a game to justify himself. What? How horrible. That's unforgivable. 
Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to offend you. But you know, he said once that there's only one person in the world that won't sw who won't swoon over me. One person who wouldn't swoon over him. His manager, you know, Miss Adrienne Andrews. Why is Mr. Power suddenly looking kind of energetic? See, I'm actually a sucker for gossip. I mean, celebrities in the world have this dazzling sort of image, right? A dazzling sort of image. But aren't you part of that dazzle, Mr. Powers? No, I'm more of a hairy, sweaty, smelly, brutish kind of guy, you see? But it's okay, really. I get to hear plenty of gossip about a lot of other stars around me as things happen. Well, that's true. Oh, hey. So, did you hear about this yet? About Miss Andrews' mentor and her suicide. You mean Miss Impax. You heard something about how her wedding was cancelled. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I thought about it a little the other day, about that mysterious death. Hey, Mr. Wright, why don't you ask me about that? Go on, go ahead. Mr. Powers is so charged up, his skin is practically glowing with electricity. Alright. Hey, so have you heard this? Celeste left a suicide note. And they say that Juan went and hid it. We heard about that in court today. That there wasn't any actual proof that she had left a note. Well, this is what I think. I think that something bad was written on that note. Something bad for Juan, that is. Something bad for Mr. Horita? How do you figure so? Well, before she died, Celeste talked with a few of her friends. And she said, It looks like I got caught up with a truly insidious man. A truly insidious man? Did she mean Mr. Corita by that? Well, there's someone else that fits the bill, right? And that would be a reason enough for him to hide the suicide note. I see. Well, that's some good info. Thank you. You're welcome. The Star and Guard and Miss Andrews are both at the detention center right now. There's still things I don't understand or know about, I'm sure. I had to get the two of them to tell me everything. Can you tell me about Juan? He debuted around the same time as Matt and everything, you know. Really? It started out small. First it was singing contests and swimming competitions. Then it was bowling tournaments. And then it was who could throw the best New Year's parties. Juan was always trying to one-up Matt. But lately, those two were escalating to more and more dangerous things. I thought that no good would come out of it all, so I began to worry. Too bad Juan's story ended so soon. Matt's younger than me. They can practically... I don't remember. See his star potential, probably? His star potential? I got his autograph the other day. It's kind of wrong now, doesn't it? I don't care what people say. Matt didn't kill Juan, I know he didn't. He didn't, technically. Hey, that's Miss Andrews. She's Matt's manager. Actually, I was interested in her for a little bit. Just just a little. Hmm, so Mr. Powers likes this type of woman. What do you know about Miss Andrews? Well, see, here's the thing. I don't really know her, know her, you know? Uh, if you're interested, I could give you a little bit of details. He's so happy he looks like a lion that found his next meal. That's Juan's former manager, right? Celeste Impax. She was with Global Studios for a while, way back when. But something's happened and she ended up moving to Worldwide Studios. Some things? As in... Well, there's no one left around who knows the details, you know. Only rumors are left now. Alright, you have nothing else to tell me. Well, hold up. Do you know this? Nope. Okay. I doubt there's stuff here. But just... Oh. Shocks. But I will double check. Okay. There's just 
so many places to go, and it sucks that it just happens one by one, but at least loading a time in between isn't terrible. Okay, nothing there. Now then, whose story do I want to hear? Let's go to Matt, because I still don't have anything to prove for... for Adrian. Dude, it's Mr. Wright! I hope you can get me off the hook tomorrow. I'm counting on you! I hope so too. Andrew just dropped a bombshell on me by saying... Juan Corita was killed by an assassin. And that, assigns, and that assassin's client is this man, Matt on guard. What's wrong? Mr. On guard, there's something I must know with 100% certainty. Hmm, you seem kind of different. You're totally not like your usual lawyer dude self. Um, about the press conference. You mean the one where Juan was gonna dress up as a nickel samurai? Yeah, I heard a little more about it from Miss Andrews. It looked like somehow Juan had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Could you please fill me in on what the secret is, please? Yo, that is a fat secret. That's massive. Mr. Nick, don't tell me. Cyclox, you said a secret, right? But I don't have any idea what it is. Do you, dude? All right, tell me about Han and Adrian. Did you know about Miss Mr. Corita and Miss Andrew's relationship? Well, it's all over the tabloids, dude. But I don't know any of the details, if that's what you mean. Look, how many times do I have to tell you? I don't care what Juan did with his life. Miss Andrews, she had a purpose in mind when she started seeing Mr. Corita. Her mentor was Mr. Corita's manager. And Miss Andrews was going to get Miss Celeste, Miss Celeste impacts a suicide note from him. Celeste. Does that jog any memories? Dude, I suddenly just got totally hungry. You up for a pizza? My treat. Um, Mr. Nick, what's a pizza? Is it kind of like a pea? Like green peas? Let's go eat one later, okay? Ugh, I got cut off by the pizza dude at the shop. That's too bad. Well, how about we get our minds off this topic and talk about something else, okay? Mr. On Guard, are you connected to Miss Impact Suicide in some way? Ooh. Present this! I I'm kind of scared to show him this card! Do it, Phoenix! What's wrong, dude? Oh, um... So about this picture card... Have you ever seen this before? Nope. Never saw it before in my life, dude. I don't think he's lying. Or is he? Then again, he looked like he gasped just now. Maybe I'm just seeing things. Yeah, Adrian, I never thought she'd go this far to frame me for the crime. I mean, what does she have against me? Dude, I don't get it. That's the thing I would like to know, too. Do you have any ideas at all? Even the slightest clue? Huh? What? Me? Don't be silly, Mr. Lawyer Dude. How am I supposed to know something like that? Tell me about this! Mr. On Guard? Dude, I know I asked you to be my lawyer and all. But I don't think I had to tell you anything and everything. Uh, what do you mean by that? It just means I don't have to tell you anything and everything, dude. Oh, oh. 
scary. Tell me about this guy. About this person. He's... He's your butler, Mr. Doe. He's your butler, Mr. Doe, right? We met him at your mansion. Oh. Yeah, that's right. He's a pretty cool dude. He can do a lot of things. He takes real good care of me. How about this? Yeah, it's all quiet. When I bring her up? I don't get it. Why would you want to frame me? I mean, I've never done anything to her, dude. Sarnard sounds pretty sincere and he seems trustworthy, so I had to find out what Miss Andrew's real intentions are. Tell me about yourself. Yeah, I'm such a handsome double. Uh, yeah. And I'm way good at sports. Karate, tennis, judo, soccer, football, hockey, fencing. Dude, it's like, no wonder I'm so popular. Uh, yeah. You're also good at sitting at this jail cell, Mr. Popular. It's true we debuted at the same time. So that's why people were always comparing us. But I totally didn't care what people were saying because he wasn't even close, dude. I mean, I won every contest we ever had, hands down. But people liked him more. Okay. I'm just curious if we're able to knock this out at all. Now let's hear what the secret of yours is. What if Mr. Karita had been successful in his plan? What would he have disclosed? I told you before, dude. I don't know. I don't know anything about Juan, okay? Look, Mr. Wright, I could keep on saying it until I'm blue in the face, but I totally didn't pay Juan any attention the whole time that night. I mean, come on. I was in the middle of a nap. Don't lie to me. Huh? I know you paid close attention to Mr. Karita, especially on that night. Whoa, how am I supposed to prove that? <laughs> I, yeah, uh, there's no way. I, okay. Yeah, that's not happening. Um. Oh. Mr. Nick, your phone! Hey, that's a Steel Samurai theme song, isn't it? I don't like the sound of this ringtone right now. It sounds kind of ominous. Yeah, I know. Hello? We're in trouble now, pal! I'll- I'll be back at the office real soon! W what's wrong? Something really unexpected just happened! Mr. Edgeworth, he- Edgeworth? Anyway, hurry up and get back to the office, pal. I don't know what's good. I didn't even finish. Hello? He got cut off. What's going on, Mr. Nick? Pumpshu said we need to go back to the office right away. Then we should hurry back. I I'm scared to go back. Oh no, the poor guy has trauma. He's like, he's like, oh god. What if my best friend from childhood is dead now too? At the office. What are you talking about, Mr. Nick? Pull yourself together! Um... Maybe it'll be good news. Somehow, I doubt that. Oh, oh, I've never noticed this before! Poor Phoenix! It's okay, buddy. Look, the lights are on, right? What took you so long, pal? Mr. Edward couldn't stick around forever and had to go! Well, what happened? We got him! We know who bought that spy camera. Huh? This quickly? And this bear is what gave him away, pal. The bear? I figured it out, pal. I figured out that we should have been looking into the bear instead of the camera. Um, uh, wasn't it Mr. Edge? Shh, Pearls. Anne, go on. 
There's only one person who bought one of those bears who's related to this crime. H who is it? Who'd be so rude as to spy on another person in their room? Not on guard. Huh? Not on guard. Your client. That's who, pal. And here I thought things could have gotten worse. Are you sure you heard right? That the person who bought this bear was... I heard it from the department store clerk, pal. And this is the credit card receipt for the purchase. It's for $3,800, pal. That's an exact match for the price of that stuffed bear. A receipt? That's all you have. Nah, it's not just a receipt, pal. The store clerk said so himself. He told me. I'm sure I sold that bear to Mr. On Guard. I mean, the clerk even got Mr. On Guard's autograph out of it, pal. So I'm pretty sure the person that bought the stuffed bear that himself was Mr. On Guard himself. Blah, blah, blah. I just read that wrong. <laughs> My sight is failing me. This can't be. Spy camera? So, what about the spy camera I found? Uh, that was a dead end, pal. I mean, you can get this kind of thing from anywhere. But for now, I guess I can give these back to you for your for uh, for you to file away into evidence. I know you don't want to give up, pal. I never thought... I didn't think it was possible. The person who put the spy camera in Juan Correa's room was Matt on guard. Why? Why would Mr. On guard do something like this? I bet it was to catch Miss Andrews and Mr. Correa on one of their rendezvous. I bet it's not good enough for me. I... I have to know the absolute truth behind this camera. Are you going to see him? Mr. On guard, I mean. Yes. I'm... I'm scared, Mr. Nick. I wonder... I wonder what we'll find out next. I'm scared myself, but I have to put on a good face for pearls. I'm not on guard. What in the world have you done? Alright. Let's go! After I save! Because we're going straight into the fray here. Oh, you're first. You're working really late, you know. It's already past 10 p.m., dude. I think it's time you about. It's a time you told me the truth. Relax. Don't you know that ignorance is bliss? If you really want to know, let's talk. You are ready for me, huh? Let's. Let's go then. Even though I probably should have saved after, but whatever. Matt Secret. Blah 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 blah. Don't lie to me. I know you paid close attention because of this. Someone used this camera to secretly film Mr. Corita's room the night of the murder. Secretly film? What's that? And then sent the images. Sent the images the camera took with this transmitter. Wow. But dude. Where was this camera you're talking about hidden? The spy camera was hidden in this bear's eye. A bear that was supposed to be a present from a fan. Hmm. I guess Juan had a few of those kinds of fans too, huh, dude? Actually, I wouldn't say this bear was a present from a fan. Hmm, you sure, dude? Who else could it be from? The person who gave this bear to Mr. Corita. Was you? Well, Mr. On Guard? Wow. Go home! Oh! What? I thought that was you! I thought that. The person who gave this bear to Miss. Oh my god! Oh! It was you. But I needed to put you, you, not like the evidence, you. Whatever. Do you know where this bear's from? I don't think I've ever met Mr. Bear before, dude. Oh, but he says he knows you. How could you forget such a great friend? What else did the bear tell you? He says that the one who put the camera in his eye was you, Mr. On Guard. If I didn't know how you work at court, I'd think I was in some serious trouble. Come on, this is all a joke, right, dude? You're just pulling my leg. Looks like you're not ready to give up your secret yet. 
Well, do you have any proof you want to show me first? Here's a proof that it was you who put the camera inside the bear. Is it now? Okay. I have here one credit card receipt, Mr. Ungard. It's from when you bought that stuff, bear. Dude, all you can tell from that is that I spent $3,800. I go to that department store all the time, okay? This $3,800? This could be like the toothbrush I bought that one time. A $3,800 toothbrush? It's ivory and it's got elephant hair for bristles. Ew, elephant hair? Is that what people, rich people who use nowadays? Anyway, the store clerk clearly remembers you and your purchase. After all, you even gave him an autograph, did you not? Dude, you should have said that earlier. Um, so can I ask you one thing? Yes? You're my lawyer, right dude? So, if you are, then why are you looking into stuff like that? Because if I don't know the truth, I can't help you. Sounds more like stupid lawyer talk to me. Hey, let's stop talking about this, okay? No, not yet. Haven't? I haven't asked you why you set up the camera yet. And what your secret is. Of course it would be strictly confidential. So, what are you gonna do now? I'm gonna find out what I wanna know because I must. The reason you hid this camera in Mr. Corita's room and filled it in secret is... Great question! I don't... Uh... Uh... <laughs> the reason you hid this camera in Mr. Karina's room and filmed it in secret is... Uh... Shucks. Because we're locked in. This is the fight. We're locked in now. Um... The girl? Do you get penalized for guessing? Yes, we do. I- okay. I'm gonna say it's the girl. Like, Adrian Andrews? I mean, he's not gonna say anything about this chick until later on, I feel. It's, it has to be one of those two. Adrian Andrews? There's a rumor going around that Miss Andrews and Mr. Corita were having a secret meetings. You, who was keeping tabs on Mr. Corita, you were going to reveal this as fact and turn it into a scandal, isn't that right? Dude, you can't be such a moron. Huh? No, oh, man. Mr. Lawyer, dude, that kind of scandal, that's good stuff. That's what we, we in the industry call juicy. The good stuff. Juicy. Look, we can get publicity without spending a penny with that kind of stuff. I mean, if people stop paying attention to us, then it'd be the end, dude. Too bad that wasn't your intention. What are you talking about? I wish your reason for spying was something so innocent, but it wasn't. You didn't spy on Mr. Corita because of Miss Andrews. Then there's only one reason I could think of for you to do such a thing. And the real reason, you set up the camera and Mr. Corita- <sighs> <laughs> what? Okay. Um, the real reason the camera on Mr. Corita's room was to murder or yikes. Your office? Huh? My office? Well, dude, you're really saying absurd. He does not want to talk about this. Maybe the girl instead? I'm gonna die. Which sucks, but... Or... Maybe it's this? What is this card? 
Maybe he doesn't know about this card. This is a certain man's calling card. The man's name is Shelly DeKiller, and I'm sure you know of him, don't you? Shelly? DeKiller? That's ridiculous! Why would I know some shady scumbag like him? If you really don't know him, then why are you acting so jumpy all of a sudden? Um... This is it. I'm finally starting to get to the truth. Yeah, the cool music started playing. I can't afford to make any more- Oh god, I only have life! I, I can't even make a mistake! I'm gonna die if I do! Mr. Matt on guard. I know why you know Mr. The Killer. It's because... You're a star! You're a hero of justice! You're his client. Since you're the one who set up that camera, that means you knew. You knew exactly what was going to happen in that room! So, how? How would you know something like that? It's because you're his client. That's why. You hired Shelly the Killer to assassinate Mr. Juan Corita. The real mastermind behind this whole murder is... You, Matt on guard. <sighs> and here I was, trying to be a good boy for you, dude. I thought, if you didn't know, you'd be able to do your job without feeling bad. Well, that's what I thought anyway. Mr. On Guard? You really did hire? Hold on a sec. I'm gonna consult myself, okay? Consult? Myself? Well, I guess it's probably about time anyway. About time for what? I think it's time for you to meet him now, Mr. Lawyer Dude. How do you do, Mr. Lawyer? I'm Matt on guard! life. <laughs> Ooh, new music. It's like in a different key. Matt's secret. Well done, Mr. Bright. I bet it wasn't easy to gather as much information as you have. You really... So you really are Shelly DeKiller's client. You didn't really think I would dirty my own hands in this, did you? What do you mean? That woman, Adrian, was quite brave herself. Trying to stick with the crime on trying to stick the crime on me? I didn't think she had it in her. But all I care about is that Juan is dead. Isn't that right, Mr. Lawyer? Th that's you're lying! What a terrible That's way past your bedtime, little girl. Go on, and let us grow us grown ups talk about more adult things. But why? Why did you hide the video camera? The weakling soon believes the words of others, just like that pathetic Adrian. Me about Miss Andrew's secret? I'm no weakling. I don't believe anyone, least of all assassins. What? Oh, come on now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. They turn their clients into cash cows by holding the sinful deeds over their head. A superstar like me. How much do you think I'm worth? Care to guess? And... and that's why... Yes. That's where the video comes in. It's got his face and the crime scene recorded on it, preserved for all time. With that, I can keep him at bay and even blackmail him if I want. That's right. That video is my insurance. Isn't that what they call it, Mr. Wright? Why would you do something so wrong? Because I'm a grown-up and I can. Good enough of an answer for you, little girl. How old are you? I'm a grown-up, but I can. How old are you? You're 21! Shut up! Uh, okay. <laughs> Why? Why would you kill Mr. Krita? Because he was about to sling so much dung onto my beautiful public image. Scandals are a little annoying, aren't they? This is all because of that press conference, isn't it? If Mr. Karina had been able to give it, then Mr. Ungard's secret would have... 
Ugh, well, that's what we call taking advantage of the situation, you know? I had no interest in doing it, really. But bit by bit, it crept up on me. And then, the situation just presented itself perfectly. How beautiful, I thought. And that's... And that's how Mr. Karina ended up dead. Let me tell you something. I'm not like Adrian. I don't depend on anyone. People are simply things to be used. Used and thrown away. Put on a sweet, innocent face and people will swallow anything you feed them. Adrian fell for it. The assassin, too. Oh, and how could I forget? Even you fell for it, Mr. Lawyer. Everyone. All working their butts off for me. Matt on guard. Oh, did that leave you speechless? What a shame. What's wrong, Mr. Lawyer? You've grown awfully quiet. How could I have been so deceived by you all this time? When we first met, I asked if you had killed Juan Corita. And you answered very clearly that you hadn't killed anyone. Hey now, I never told you any lies. The person who did the killing was that de-killer guy, right? All I'm guilty of is taking a cat nap in my room. You... You... You killed Mr. Corita! <laughs> I dare you to say that in court tomorrow. Ugh. Oh, but too bad. You can't. You're my lawyer after all, aren't you? You could always drop by my case and refuse to represent me. How does that sound? Oh, but you can't, can you? That'd be one thing you absolutely can't do. Mystic Maya! You wouldn't want to test the killer. He's a man of his word, or so I hear. You could end up getting a certain friend of yours rubbed out of you if you lose. Y you scoundrel! So if I were you, Mr. Wright, Esquire, I think I would give it all my all tomorrow. Remember, everyone likes a happy win-win resolution. I I'll get you for this! That's such a cliché phrase. Juan said something just like that if memory serves. Of course, well, we all know how that turned out for him, don't we? Good night, Mr. Lawyer. Maya. Maya, what am I supposed to do? And now? Now you finally found it. Oh, the starting line of this case. Edgeworth. I don't care for the horrid atmosphere here. Let's return to the precinct. Well, right. What are you going to do? If you plan on changing your strategy. No! We can't do that. That's right. He's holding Maya hostage. But what should I do? That's not something I can answer for you. M Mr. Hedgeworth! Right. Only you can decide to go from here. One year ago, at that time, I didn't truly really understand what a prosecutor was. And that is why I had to leave the prosecutor's office. I felt that I couldn't under- I couldn't stand at a court of law until I knew what a prosecutor really was. And now, right, it's your turn. My turn? What is this thing called a lawyer? What can you do as one? You must find the answer. You must find it on your own. I'm a lawyer, but to fight for someone who is clearly a killer... I'm not on guard, that man is really- UGH! It doesn't matter who... It doesn't matter who. Every person deserves a proper defense and a fair trial. Isn't that the basis of our judicial system? Proper defense? What exactly is that? Is that where a lawyer forcibly and blindly gets an acquittal through shouting and trickery? Ugh, ironic that you of all people should say such a thing. This isn't exactly how you have fought for your clients up until now. Ugh. Well, that may be true, but that's... that's... That's because I believed my clients to be innocent from the bottom of my heart. But if I were to get on guard at an acquittal, that... That isn't a proper defense at all. I, I became a lawyer because I thought... I thought I could save people who were suffering and in pain. But... When I look at the mess we're in, I can't even protect the person closest to me. Even if I were to win the case, I still lose in the end. I just don't know what to do. 
Right. Would you get a hold of yourself? You have it all wrong. Huh? We aren't some sort of heroes. We're only human, you and I. You want to save someone? This would be easier said than done, wouldn't you say? That's... You are a defense attorney. You can't run away from that. You can only fight. That's all you can do. Why fight? What am I even fighting for? People like you and Francisca are always using all you have to pin me down. You fight to the very end, even when you know the truth is not with you. But I'm not like you. I can't fight for a false verdict, for a man I clearly know to be guilty. Francisca. She fights for herself. The only thing she fights for is a perfect win record, that's all. And? Isn't that the same as you? Isn't that why you ran away a year ago? Because your precious win record was destroyed? You are so petty. The girls are fighting. I see. Now I understand why you despise me so. However, you are mistaken. What do you... Thanks to you, when you sealed off my path to a perfect win record, I began to realize the error of my ways. I realized that things such as a perfect record were meaningless. What? I don't believe you. Are you saying that is why you left the prosecutor's office? But then, why? Why are you here now? The answer to that is something you will find out on your own. I have faith you will see it before the verdict is read tomorrow. But if you can't, then you'll be powerless to change the ending of the story. Mr. Nick, the transceiver! I'm sorry for what happened earlier. Now then, Mr. Attorney, do you wager you can obtain an acquittal tomorrow? My, my, what is the matter, Mr. Attorney? I don't sense your usual anger this time. I'll admit, I'm kind of bummed that the big secret was that just a guard was a epic evil guy. <laughs> yeah, that is the twist. Tell me, please. Why are you holding Maya hostage for Mr. Ungard's sake? Why are you... Why are you doing this for that cold-blooded killer? Right. Please don't misunderstand things. He is my client. Don't toy with me! A man who hires an assassin is just as much of a killer himself. I believe you were asking me for a reason as to why I'm doing what I am. Yeah. This is what I like to call my aftercare. What the heck is aftercare? My name carries a certain amount of honor and dignity, Mr. Attorney. I take great care to ensure that no suspicion falls upon my clients for my handiwork. That is what is called client relations and is part of an assassin's duty. Assassin's duty? We were unlucky this time and my client was arrested as a suspect. As a result, I did what I had to do to enlist your expert help, Mr. Attorney, and to ensure that you would do everything in your power to the very end. What is your name? I believe I told you once before, however. You did, but... My name is the Killer. Shelley the Killer. You're Shelley the Killer? Please keep in mind, you do not have much space to maneuver with me. As a de-killer, I always finish what I set out to do. If you fail to keep up your end of the bargain... Maya! It would be my duty as an assassin to see to it she receives a nice, long nap. Uh, no! Now then, if you'll excuse me, if someone were to trace the signal back to me, it would be quite troublesome. I... I don't know what to say. Edgeworth! Hmm? Did you hear that? At the end of the transmission? Huh? Oh, that. It sounded like a cat. A cat? Oh. Okay, I love this music, but that, this music scares me. It makes me all anxious. How's my brain? It's... It's still there. But my voice probably will not last much longer. <laughs> what is it? I, I think... 
I know where Shelly the Killer is holding Maya hostage. Edgeworth, have all police units head for On Guard Mansion immediately. Alright, you hurry over as well then. Don't lose hope yet, Pearls. The fight only has just begun. Yeah! Ooh. This music, I love it. But it makes me mad anxious. Why is there a doll outside there? Maya! Please answer us! Mystic Maya! We have this area completely surrounded. There's no way for him to escape. Assuming he's still in the area. I can't believe it! That butler! All this time he was the killer! He and God were working together all this time. I'm sure they have worked out a contingency plan ahead of time. Well... Why this thing move? Oh, it's a figurine of a bear. There are a lot of cuts in it for some reason. A bear? Isn't that more of a thing for Mr. Corita? What would something like this be here? Right, look down. There's a little pet door installed here. Uh, I'm sure that's for Shu. Do you think that this came through that little door? Mm, this door, it's locked! Well, I'm pretty used to breaking doors down by now. Let's go, Edgeworth. Ooh. Ooh. Ugh. There's no one here. From the looks of this room, I would say this is on guard's private lounge. Look at this, right? An antenna for sending and receiving radio signals and a VCR. Check inside the deck. If there's a tape, it would be an important ev piece of evidence. If we're lucky, it'll have the moment the crime was committed and rec recorded on it. I'm sorry, but the tape deck is empty. There's no tape to be found. No. But there's no mistake that someone used this to record something. It looks like someone took the tape we were looking for and escaped with it. Okay. We've searched all over, but it looks like he got away. I'm sorry. It looks like he slipped out of our grasp this time. And now, we've lost our only lead. Don't give up yet. That little girl is looking to to you to be her pillar. And it's like 11 o'clock. It's way past her bedtime. Yeah, you're right. We're close, I can tell. We've already set up checkpoints along every route leading out of this district. Leave the rest to us. Maya. Well, well, well. Maya, Maya, Maya. Look at you. This looks like a picture of Miss Impacts. With love, Celeste. Miss Impacts, you mean? Yes, Mr. Corita's former manager. Why would a picture of Miss Impacts be here in Mr. Angard's mansion? Why does it say with love? Hmm, this might be a clue. Ah! It's wrong, Pearls. P please let me see that picture frame. Hmm, what's so special about the frame? On the back! There's something written on the back of the frame. Maya. It's Mystic Maya. She left us a message. What? I thought you'd come. I knew you would. Now listen up. You'd better get on guard of a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you, ever. I'm fine, so you don't need to worry. There's so much I want to write, but I don't think I have a lot of time left. Pearly, you're there too, right? Make sure you help Nick, okay? Someone's gotta watch out for the helpless honk. Helpless honk. Honk. Lonk! Oh. Um, that's it for now, Nick. I guess I'll talk to you later. That's... I... Uh, no! Mystic Maya! Right! What's wrong? Why the blank stare? Oh, um, nothing. We searched the house, and this is the last room. It looks like he eluded us. Edgeworth. Yes? As far as clues go, I think this is about all I'm gonna get. But uh, I'm still short on one last thing. And what is that? Miss Andrew's psych lock. If I could just find out what secret she's holding. Then I could stand a chance in court tomorrow. To blow this case wide open and expose the truth. 
I think I know what you're thinking. I'll contact the detention center. Um, thanks, Edgeworth. Oh, well, let's go, Pearls. It's time to open that last lock. Ooh, you're just throwing me in there? Okay. Good evening, Mr. Wright. It's like... Midnight. And, uh... Y'all are keeping me up. Is what she would say if she actually cared. What's wrong? You look ill. Miss Andrews, I've come to remove your psych lock. <laughs> Why would you just say that? that? That's weird, bro. Don't, don't, don't say it like... I have come to remove your psych lock. How is she supposed to know what that means? Psych lock? I want to know. And you will tell me. Oh, that's kind of weird. Phoenix is just... He, he's only one track mind now. He, he's not even trying to like hide this this weird voodoo whatever thing that he has going on for him. He's like, you will tell me everything. Your secret. Fine, go ahead. Try to break me if you can. Ooh, be feisty. She's like, you want to bet? Well, lucky for me, I have a little bit of health left, so... Let's go. You're one lock. Said revenge. A woman... There's something, something or someone in the past that would help make her take revenge, which... Should be her. Celeste, Celeste. Nice. Also, Swan Manager. On top of the note, this is all to do with Matt. You're right, you haven't mentioned him yet, but for you to hate on guard, it would have to have some relation. Can you explain the relation? This. This is a photo of Miss Impacts, correct? She looks younger than when she passed away, though. What? With love, Celeste. This is Miss Impax's handwriting, isn't it? Where did you find this? No, that's all right. It was a rhetorical question. Yeah, it is. I found this at Mr. Ongard's mansion. And after all this time, my last remaining secret has been revealed. Celeste, she was supposed to get married to Juan. Yes, but I heard that it didn't work out. Because Mr. Carita didn't want to get married to her anymore, right? Yes, because of Matt. Because of Mr. On Guard? What do you mean? I think I can see where this is going. I actually don't. But they're related. Celeste, she was Matt's manager a long time ago. She was one of the happiest women in the world at the time. I was working part-time back then, and I often saw the two of them together. So that's why. With love, Celeste is written on the frame of that picture. They were a couple. They were a couple, weren't they? It wasn't anything as splendid as that. Celeste was being used. Toyed with until she was thrown away. That's so horrible. Matt's entire image is built around how nice and wonderful of a man he is. His scandal would have destroyed that. Which is why Celeste, in her kindness, moved over to Worldwide Studios. And that is where she met Juan. She seemed really happy with him, even happier than when she was with Matt. Celeste and Juan were such a good match that they were even planning to get married. And then, it was suddenly called off. On the night Juan called their marriage off, Celeste she killed herself. And that's why I framed Matt. It was revenge for Celeste and for myself. I'm sure even you can guess why Juan called off the wedding, right? No, actually. Matt confessed to Juan about his relationship with Celeste. Okay. I see. So that's what happened. But 
Then why did Mr. Karina have to call off the wedding? I don't understand at all. It was probably because of his worthless male pride. Juan and Matt were always fierce rifles. Matt waited for the wedding announcement and then unleashed the truth on Juan. Worthless male pride. Ouchie, right? <laughs> he was aiming for when it would hurt Juan the most. Poor Miss Impacts! That wasn't the end of it. That day, I'm almost certain that Celeste left a suicide note behind. And in that note, she left a detailed account of Matt's various misdeeds and... So that she would never again be hurt by Matt, she chose to die. Then, when Juan discovered her body, he hit her throat. But why would he do that? It's simple. Juan realized that the note was a powerful weapon against Matt. And it would be especially damaging to keep his refreshing... To his refreshing like a spring breeze image. In any case... When his pride hurt, Juan sought revenge. Revenge, that's the word again. Juan wanted to publicly disclose the contents of that suicide note. At that time, that would cause Matt the most damage, of course. And that was... at the press conference after the stage show. And I know all about it, because I heard it all from Juan. It was so... I could find out about all the things that I drew close to Juan to begin with. They're quite a pair of hideous monsters, aren't they? Even Celeste's death was something for them to use in their game. That night when I found Juan's body, it's only natural that I thought the murder was Matt. Those two were always spying on each other on one another after all. As for me, I was frantically searching for Celeste's suicide note. So why did you tell us? I know! I wanted to destroy it before it ever went public. I was going to burn it. I even brought a lighter. For what reason would you want to hold it? I know! <laughs> but... I couldn't find the suicide note, and that's when revenge crossed my mind. Yes, I was going to bring them my own kind of cruel revenge. Celeste was killed by those two monsters. So, when I, was when I stabbed Juan's body with that knife, I didn't feel a single shred of guilt. <gasps> and that's all I have to say. Well, Mr. Wright, even knowing all this, are you still going to help that man? I... I'm a lawyer. I see. What a foul profession. Thank you very much for your time and for talking with me. It was no big deal. I couldn't sleep anyway. I can't sleep either. Not with my situation. Or with what I know now. To be continued. To be continued. Is it time? Oh, it's trial time. Which we will save for next week, because I know it's going to be long. Um, yeah, it's going to be long. Wow, we did it though. Man, that whole entire investigation took three hours. Woo! <laughs> but I, I, I also knew this was going to be long too. So, cool. We figured out the twist that 30 hours... It's already the next day for the game. Yeah, it's going to be the next day for the trial, so we're done. After, uh, did I say 30? I meant three hours. Oh my god. It's been three hours for investigation time. I thought I heard you say it took 30 hours. No. Nah. <laughs> but yes, good work, everybody. Cool. We we got we got through a good chunk, and I'm hoping by next week we'll be done. the The goal for next week, and hopefully I'm not like stupid tired like I am this week for some reason, but I hope to finish it next week. That is that is really not even hope. I plan I plan to finish this next week, 
because I so badly want to play Trials and Tribulations and and introduce to y'all the girly the girly who has affected me so <laughs> but honestly this is a good case this is genuinely a really cool case it's just probably going to get annoying from here on because of the the twist there's uh, there is twist and then there's more twist and then plot 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 I don't know. There's just a lot. It's so chaotic. This whole entire case is so chaotic. Um, but I guess that's what makes it so memorable. I suppose. Anyway, I am thankful for you guys hanging out with me. Genuinely. I'm happy that my voice was good today. It seems like my my jaw doesn't hurt. My throat lasted for three hours, so that's pretty great. Yeah, thank you. I, I was feeling it today. I was feeling the voice acting today, so I'm really happy that that turned out okay. Um, and hopefully next week, I don't have like all the crazy voices because I had Lada who has the country voice, Old Bag who has old lady voice that kind of melted with Lada because because it was too soon. And then I I tried to see if I could do something for Shelly to kill her, but uh, I just think he's monotonous. I I wanted to give what's his face Matt. Kind of like a cool surfer boy, sort of drawl kind of deal. But then when he he flips character and introduces Matt on guard, his true persona, he needs to sound like a cocky bastard, right? So tried to tried to play that off, and Phoenix is just my voice. I can't really think of anything with Edgeworth too, to be honest. So, also, just my voice. But usually, I, 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 I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get pearls. And honestly, she did not. Her voice gladly did not bug me today. It was, it was hurting a lot last week, so I kind of withheld doing voices, but it was really good today. You're going through the DM struggle. I really am. I've had the exact problems with D&D. &D. Yeah, where you just run out of voices because there's so many and you're trying to, even if you try to give them like, I I'll be honest, when I listen, I only know somebody acts as voices. Right, right, right. When I listen to myself later on, I'm, I'm like in my head, I thought that I nailed this, right? And then when I go back and listen, it's one thing listening to my voice again, but it's another thing going, God, that did not sound any different <laughs> it shouldn't sound any different. I don't even know why I tried. But, oh well. It's better to try, right? It's, it's better to try and see if it works than, than not trying at all and not knowing. Right, right, right. Once you're, I'm not good at or bad, uh, I know that feeling. <laughs> I know that feeling. Um... Okay, so really, yeah, goal next week is to finish. I hope we get to finish Justice for All. I have been really bad about streaming on Thursdays, I guess. So maybe next Friday? I don't know. It's either going to be Thursday or Friday, and I'll try to announce it ahead of time, too, to make sure if people wanted to watch the conclusion of that. I'll, I'll probably put up a story. I've been, I guess I've just been notifying people I feel like notifying people through the stories app thingy. I know. I don't know if everybody uses like mobile because I don't think it pushes. I don't think stories push on PC. Story app. Yeah, it's like on Twitch. When you use Twitch on like the mobile, the mobile app, they have like these little stories kind of thing. It's like the Instagram reels or something like that. And that's how I announced it. But then I'm like thinking to myself, there's no way to view those on PC, is there? 
what's the point? <laughs> what's the point if I can't even see it on PC? So I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out a way to communicate because I've been so bad about using Twitter. So, so bad about using Twitter because I don't really hang out there too long. I just hang out there trying to trying to like minimize my time on there. Get a discord. I'll be honest. Don't 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 take this to heart. Don't get too excited either. But I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about opening up a, a public discord where anybody could drop in and join again. But I've I've had my runarounds before. And honestly, I don't really aside from like my local friend groups, I don't really talk about it. You had a bad experience twice. <laughs> I've had a bad experience twice and um decided it wasn't worth it, which is why I never made one again. Um, but, uh, I'm sorry, nah, don't worry. Not your fault. It's, it's just stupid people online that, before you, that kind of ruined the, the desire for it, I guess. But I have been thinking about it on and off, because I really, I'm really bad about notifying when I go live, and before... I had mix it up, right? I, mix it up was supposed to already push these notifications directly on Twitter for that, and then it just Twitter decided, no, okay, no more third-party API APIs, right? So then that it, it sucked because literally after a week of me going, heck yeah, I figured out how to do it. It's gonna push from now on. And then that's when Twitter was like, yeah, no, we're we're gonna we're gonna cut off those automated those, <laughs> those automated push notifications. And I'm like, I hate you. Why why'd you do that? That was the whole reason that I downloaded it in the first place, right? <laughs> so painful. Very, very, very sucks. So that's why I've been kind of thinking about doing the Discord again, because at least I know there's bots in there that automatically notifies when I go live, yada yada. But I, I really don't... One, okay, I don't really talk a lot on Discord. I don't. Um, maybe if I had my own, then I'll just start learning to adjust to it. But... I, 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 aside from just like my friend circles, don't, don't really do that. So I don't know. I'm thinking about it. It's just moderating the thing again and then dealing with potential creeps. My, my, my patience for it is so low. I think I'll just ban on site. <laughs> ban on site and be like, yeah, don't be weird because I'm tired. I don't have time for that anymore. Not that I had time for it in the first place, but I was kind about it. Now I'm just not nice. All my niceness goes to the 12, the 36 hours that I'm in the hospital is where I'm nice. But right when I'm outside, it's it's over. I have like no, <laughs> zero empathy and, and, and kindness to give because it's all gone. There's maybe some precautions you can take to avoid the bad stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but setting that up, it's... I'm lazy. That that too. I'm just lazy. I, I want to just be bare minimum streamer. <laughs> TBH, I just be bare minimums bare minimum streamer, but I'll think about it. If if I'm still having my heart set on it by I don't know. Maybe like during my stream anniversary, then you'd hear something by then. Having to help, I don't want to insert yourself into your business anyway. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for that. Um, thankful for the offer. But we'll see. We'll see. Just too many bad experiences before that has turned me away from it. So, well, I'll figure it out. Just manual updates, I guess. And another thing, I guess another thing that I'll have to eventually ask is... Where would you guys like to be updated? 
Because I feel, since I stream on Twitch, I feel like utilizing what Twitch already has in-house. Like, for example, the stream schedule, right? I don't know how often people look at it or use it. I know that some people do use it. But I don't know how often people actually look at it to know that there is an upcoming, upcoming stream. I used it for like a week. Just out of curiosity to see how it's set up. And I guess it's a good way to like anticipate the the next stream coming up if it happens. <laughs> if it is actually withheld or not withheld, like upholded. But I'm 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 I've only been like streaming once a week. Like, for sure, something that I know I'm going to try to be entertaining for and everything else is like, hey, I'm just going to be playing a game if you want to hang out, cool. Or playing a game slash I'm going to be drawing and if you want to just hang out, that's cool too, I guess. So that's the reason why I was like thinking about using the stories, but then nobody, well, I don't know how many people actually use the mobile app. So, yeah, I'm kind of an internet hermit. I'm probably not a good example of your average stream viewer. No, it's okay. I, I'm just trying, I guess I'm just trying to be creative with what I'm comfortable with, you know? So, don't worry. That's good. That's healthy. Honestly, half the time I'm like, please go out there. That's perfectly fine. I, I encourage it. Because honestly, the internet is a hellscape right now. Not a lot going on that is worth it to stick around too long. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. Lots, lots of thoughts about how I want to go forward with stream notifications. Or, you know what, I just be the unicorn. The unicorn among the Twitch the Twitch forest of streamers where if you catch me, cool. It's like a rare sighting in the wild. <laughs> but I do try to stream at least once a week. I'm glad you're still streaming. I get to catch it every now and then. Yeah. And honestly, aside from like the random update of the model here and there, you're not really missing much. Not, not much has changed. I'm still, still the same old me. So, it's not like if you if you missed a stream or two, it's not like all of a sudden you're lost on season four of episode 56 of the Rai anime or whatever. Oh man. Okay, I am going to go because my voice is going to be giving out here. In a little. I need to give it a break. But I am thankful for you guys hanging out and dropping by. Um, and I will stream again next week. Finale of the Ace Attorney. Good night, good night. And have a good day tomorrow too. Found out the Attack on Titan's final episode really wasn't that a while ago? I feel like that was a while ago. It was released in parts and years apart. Wait, I know that the final season... Okay, before we... Yeah, before I, I suddenly go off on a whole entire feel... <laughs> I should just go. I have no horse in this race. I don't know nothing about Attack on Titan. Okay, I'm gonna go. Bye. Good night. Oh, that's cute. I didn't realize that was there. I Can I replay those credits again? No? Dang. It was only a one-time thing. I wonder if I could, like, place it somewhere. Oh, look! It's playing again! How do I... Hold up. Can I, like... 
Sorry guys, just testing out something. <laughs> I forgot that this was a thing that I placed in here. That's cute! That's cute, but I don't want it to be scrolling on top of my hedgehog. Wait, play again. I'm part of the riot, I mean, well, look! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> that's good. Oh, that's healthy. All right. All right. Excitement. Hype. Hype. I think that's a good way of like being like, yeah, nice, cool. People active in my chat. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>